Quiet on set, you damn kids. Who wants to make a short? We'll pay you an IMDb credits and experience. Lights, camera, action, it's I don't give a flick, your favorite film podcast, oh yeah. Tarantino, Mero, and Spielberg, here's looking at you, kid. We talk movies and TV shows, and sometimes other things we like. And no one's coming right at your fucking face, every minute of every day will never stop. We'll talk lenses, music, and foley. We'll understand the depth of field. We've got theories so out of this world and epic it'll blow off your fucking tits. Oh yeah, that was bullshit. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of I Don't Give a Flick. I'm your host, Johnny Blackburn. Alongside me this week, as he is every week, is the guy who won't leave me alone. Gary Elmore. And Neil Riley is off this week, but he will be back. We are on episode two of our day-long marathon, bringing you guys all the best hits that nobody wants us to play, but we're going to play them anyways. Here we go. We've got two guests, back by popular demand, fan favorite, literally the guy that everybody loves to hate and hates to love, Tom Elmore. Tom, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Just... And not that stuff. Tom, you have a loud projecting <laughs> voice. Fuck you. Use it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jonathan. Oh, my God. And this is Tom's last episode. I know I said that in season one, uh, back by popular demand. Tom was with us on the uh, fantasy and film uh, at, in season one. Isn't that uh, right, Gary? Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm, I, I don't I don't understand the joke on that one, but Gary, Gary isn't that right? That was cool. That's right. He did not. That's right. Well, he also thought Chuck's wife Point was that direction when you talk. We're clearly cutting this out. This is not going in there. <laughs> <laughs> the and, joke stays. The and explanation of the joke doesn't. Stop. Unfortunately, somehow we just ran out of guests on our list, and we scraping the bottom of the barrel. Bottom of the barrel. We had to invite back Jacob Johnson. Jacob, welcome back. Never happy to be here. Yeah, no, I know. That's why you always come back so often. Uh, Jacob is host of the very popular podcast, R- Jacob and Reese versus Evil. Uh, you can catch them. Are you guys, are y'all streaming on any of the major podcasting sites right now? Yes, finally? sir. We finally are. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, the usual. Awesome. Yeah. Pray the usual. Uh, we try and release uh, every Friday. Okay. All right. Well, you guys check them out as they uh, they post consistently. Just like we do, make sure to subscribe or, I don't know, smash that like button. I don't know what. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Johnny. <laughs> It'll catch on, Gary. I promised Gary I would try to let that catch on. I don't know if there are like buttons on Spotify, Apple, or Google Play, or whatever. Um, but due to the popularity that we had with our first two franchise episodes where we discussed the Star Wars and Star Trek cinematic and TV show universes, uh, we are going to go ahead and try it out with Marvel today. Uh, we did learn our lesson, though, as we tried to cram a ton of information into a very short amount of time and uh, with those two episodes. So today we are going to be discussing discussing the Marvel Cinematic Universe and only phase one. Uh, we have Tom and Jacob with us because they are both experts in the field of comic books and uh, things of that nature. So excited to hear their perspective on the first six films made for the Marvel Universe. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, Gary, I'm going to go ahead and let you take the lead on the majority of this since you were the one that did today's itinerary. So start us off. All right. So uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, almost didn't begin when it started. Mm-hmm. So in the late 80s, uh, Marvel, the comic book company, uh, was kind of struggling because the comic books had uh, sort of hit... Uh, peak popularity and then there had been so many that were printed they started to come down in popularity and value much like the video game industry had in the early 80s and so marvel financially as a studio was struggling so it sold the rights to a lot of its intellectual property for movies to other companies so that they could try and stay afloat Uh, one of those that they sold was iron man and they sold that in uh, 1990 uh, to universal studios um, Universal Studios uh, then uh, sold that in uh, 1996 to 20th Century Fox, 
Um, and then in 2000, they were sold to New Line Cinema. 20th Century Fox said they didn't want to have another superhero movie to do because they're already busy with X-Men. Um, and so they, they sold them to New Line. New Line was interested in doing a movie and tried to come up with an idea for it, but they weren't really 100% behind it. And so uh, after a number of years, the contract reverted. So if you don't, if you have a intellectual property in uh, the movie industry and you don't use it within a certain time frame, uh, you lose the rights to it generally and it'll go back to whoever uh, initially created it. So in 2005, um, Marvel regained the rights to Iron Man and uh, then they were like, hey, uh, we want to make a movie. We don't have a studio, so we'll make Marvel Studios to to make a movie. And, you know, we're going to, you know, put put some money behind it and like, you know, see what happens. We'll, we'll probably make two or three movies because uh, we've got... Iron Man back and he hasn't had a movie before. So we want to have him make a movie. And then we also have the Hulk. So we'll make a Hulk movie. And I'm, and then, you know, maybe, maybe another one and we'll kind of see how it goes. And so they started working on the process of making the movie. They uh, were looking for writers for the film and they shopped it around like 20 or 30 different writers. All of them were like, no, we're, we're not interested in that. And then finally, uh, they did get a writer attached, and they also got uh, John Favreau attached to direct it, who was very excited. Um, he actually went on a diet and lost seventy pounds when he was making the movie, you know, before making the movie. Um, and originally, they were going to cast uh, Sam Rockwell uh, in the role of Tony Stark, not Sam Worthington. Just not so Sam people Worthington. Are confused. Okay. Very, right. very different. Not the people. guy from Avatar. Right. Okay. Right. right. Um, and so. Uh, and they were going ahead with that process. And then um, John Favreau saw the screen test that Robert Downey Jr. did. And uh, John Favreau was like, I have to have that guy. Um, and Robert Downey Jr. was also a fan of Iron Man. And John Favreau kind of saw the similarities between Tony Stark and Robert Downey Jr. Uh, you know, they were both public figures who um, had famously had a lot of... Uh, issues uh, throughout their life. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. was a star in the 80s, and then he had a lot of uh, drug problems and alcohol problems. And so in the 90s, uh, it not had been a great decade for him. And so he's like, I think he can connect to the Tony Stark character. And that may or may not pay off, but we'll see. How old was he at the time when he got that part? Uh, I think Robert Downey Jr.'s like 49 now, so he was... Well, he, he he might have been like thirty five, I guess, at the time. Well, no, he oh. seems a lot. He's only forty nine now. I don't know. Let me let me take it. Let me take a look. Sure, Robert Downey. Because like this is the kind of information. Yeah, you should yeah, just, you just have. Yeah, uh, uh, he was born in nineteen sixty five, so he's fifty six. So he would have been uh, thirty seven when he. Or, wow. Well, how long ago was that? Fifteen years. Could have been forty. Fifteen years. Wow. Wow. Two thousand six. It wow. seems like a lot longer ago, doesn't it? Yeah. 2006. So anyway, I'm glad all of you uh, are aware of Robert Downey Jr.'s age now. <laughs> um, and so uh, they were, John Favreau was like, I have to have him. And Marvel's like, we don't really have enough money to pay for him. So Robert Downey Jr. was like, fine, I will do Iron Man. You can pay me $500,000. And I don't know, 8% of any profits that these movies might make. And... Marvel's like, hey, that's a sweet deal. We'll make that happen. I'm sorry to interrupt really quick. Is this 8% of all Marvel movies made or just the Iron Man yeah. and Avengers series? All Marvel really? movies? Yeah. So even like Ant-Man and the Wasp, he took 8% of that, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. and Is is my understanding of the contract. What? Yeah. That's well, ridiculous. That, wow. Him, him taking that deal really opened up like his ability to sort of direct the creative flow of the... Uh, you know, Marvel Studios and everything. Tom, that is incredibly insightful well, and I, profound, I, honestly. It really I'm, helps, yeah. yeah. I'm glad that we have you on this episode and that Gary's not coming up with those. Yeah. 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 So he did get uh, some creative <laughs> control as well. Um, and uh, basically, Marvel Studios had thought superhero movies were kind of on their way out because by... By this time, it was around 2007, and you'd had movies like Spider-Man 3, which had not done well at the box office, the Sam Raimi movie. Uh, you had you had Blade 3, which also did not do super well at the box office. Fantastic Four, which did just awful <laughs> at the box office. Uh, been... The 2003 Daredevil, which had done not well at the box office. That was that the first Fantastic Four or the Rise of the Silver Surfer, the second one? 
That was the first one. You sure? I think uh, at that point, Rise of Silver Surfer had come out in like 04. Jacob, do you remember? Yeah, was I, that think, 04 or I, think, I think it was like 05 for the first one. And then 2007 was Rise of Silver Surfer, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> neither of them did. No, no, well. that's very true. Yeah. Neither yeah. of them did did well. Yeah, and these were all so bad Marvel, movies, too. It wasn't just yeah. like bad box ups. These were just bad movies. Yeah. So Marvel Studios like, you know, 8% is not going to really be that big of a deal. And we'll get Robert Downey Jr. You know, it'll wash out to a couple million. We'll be fine. Hmm. Um, and that turned out to be the case. No. No? Actually, what happened? actually it did not. Um, so uh, from there, Iron Man was a huge success. Uh, the Hulk movie... Eh, not so much, but then uh, they continued on and started building onto that. So Marvel broke it has broken its movies into four phases. Uh, phase one um, includes the movie Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, The First Avenger, and The Avengers, which is what we are going to try and limit the discussion to today, because <laughs> uh, it's a big, big group. Um, yeah, and even that's a bunch of stuff. Though. Yeah, yeah, six of those yep. is yeah. That's yeah. It's still a lot to get through. Um, and those movies all grossed three point eight billion dollars, which was collectively yeah, yeah more than probably Marvel thought when they mm-hmm. signed that contract. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and although then, I'm sure they weren't bad no, about it. No, not at all. Well, probably pissed that they had to give eight percent to one actor, but <laughs> um, well. and then Phase Two um, had Iron Man three, Thor: Dark World. Uh, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers 2, Age of Ultron, and Ant-Man. Again, Ant- all films we will not be covering. Right. Um, and that was <laughs> $5.2 billion. And then Phase 3 was the most recent phase, and that had Captain America Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, and Spider-Man Far From Home. Boy, I can't wait to be on that podcast. That one sounds very interesting. Yeah. That's going uh, to be a lot to cover. That, that phase grossed thirteen and a half billion. So it's uh, put Marvel Studios up as one of the biggest studios. And I was talking to Johnny about this last night, and I was like, aside from Disney, they're probably the largest studio. And Johnny helpfully reminded me that they are a Disney they studio. They are Disney. They, so, Disney owns their ass. Yep. Yep. Do you think that uh, Avengers Endgame is what got most of that thirteen point five, or is it just because there's eleven movies? Uh, each of these movies on the list uh, grossed nearly a billion dollars. Okay. Um, Avengers Endgame did do like 2.8, 2.8 billion. right? Yeah. So it's it's the big one. Do you remember way back then when like all in phase one, you were like, I'm tired of superhero movies. Hopefully they go away. And yet you saw every single one of them. Everybody in the that, world. Right? Look at yeah. these numbers. Everybody's watched these. Yes, I do. We were what so Gary and I went and saw Wrath of Man last night. It's a new uh, Guy Ritchie and Jason Statham film. Um, pretty good. Anyways, so they came out with a preview for the next phase. So the next phase four, essentially, of of Marvel. And uh, you know they they brought up the next Doctor Strange. They brought up the next volume of Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, what else did I tell you? The Eternals, right. Eternals. Um, uh, Black Widow. Uh, and, yeah. So it they're still the ball is still rolling. Like they're not going to stop anytime soon. You know, they're going to continue to capitalize. And Jacob, you had brought this up on uh, a couple episodes in season one, talking about how you originally thought you weren't going to miss superhero films, but once quarantine started and we couldn't go to theaters anymore, now you're, you're pining for them a little bit, you know? Oh yeah, exactly. Like having uh WandaVision and even uh, uh Falcon and the winter soldier come out. It's just like, Oh man, I forgot how much I missed Marvel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so the uh, the three phases have been complete. They're moving into phase four now. Um, and it wasn't when Marvel started, they didn't really know it was going to, of course, become what it has. Uh, the, <laughs> they wouldn't have given him eight percent if they did. <laughs> yeah. I, sort of the the movie set uh, to, to be on nowadays is uh, is the Marvel movies. So um that's uh, that's where we are with the the background. So we're only going to be talking about Phase One movies. Um, so the first one of Phase One uh, is Iron Man of two thousand eight, um, which uh, sort of sets up the background of Tony Stark and who he is. Because Marvel was concerned when they released that that nobody would know who Iron Man was. So they did a big marketing prep campaign to let people know, hey, this is Iron Man. They released some short um, cartoon movies beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, to kind of 
blanket the ground with what, that. What cartoon movies? What are you talking about? They did a fair amount. They did, they did some like Iron they're, Man they're, they're on little Marvel animated universe. They I think they did like Doctor Strange, uh, Iron Man. They also did uh, Young Event, not Young Avengers or Avengers Next, where it was like the Avengers kids, the kids, and Hulk okay. versus was that Hulk Titans versus. Kind of kind of that was that didn't didn't all that come after iron man i know like i felt like iron man set it all off uh iron man the animated one i believe came before it but even then iron man did have like a 90s animated series along with like the spider-man yes, right 90s animated series Let me right check. are you talking about that iron man that was uh like cgi and he was little he was a kid and he was skinny mm-hmm what am, what am i thinking of let me see i don't know what, you were just looking it up why'd you close it I couldn't find it, oh. but they released three short films oh. about Iron Man to prep yeah. everything. Yeah. 2007 oh. is when it came out. <laughs> okay. It's this called Invincible Iron him. Man. That's why I love having Tom on everybody is he can just get, get under Gary's skin. Uh, it's amazing what your uh, your family can do to you. We're cutting all this out, right? Nope. No, nope. we got to leave it in. <laughs> well, we got we to gotta leave it in. We got to leave it in. Uh, so Iron Man sets Iron Man sets the tone for the entire storyline of the MCU for yeah. everything to it, to start it, to begin. And it really does you, like all of the uh, the the style of writing that they have, where they they tell a story, uh, how they do, and then like even like cut scenes at the end because that's when you first see like Nick Fury in the cut scene of Iron Man. Right. He says, "Hey, I'm getting together a group of people." Yeah, people are like, what? what? What are you talking about? I've never heard of well, these had, Avengers. So if we look at superhero movies pre-2008, pre-Iron Man, what movies come to your mind really quickly that actually showed an in-depth, detailed origin story? Not mention it as like a flashback, like fucking like Batman or something, but actually told an in-depth, spent half the movie explaining the origin of the hero. Superman. Most of them. Yeah. Most of them most did of, do that. They uh, almost all cover the origin because they're like, like nobody yeah. knows... No mainstream people know who these yeah. people are. Like the first Spider-Man movie, three quarters of that was probably the origin. Yeah, Superman. Yep. Yeah, Batman touched on it a bit, but he's Batman. One I feel of like the touched few. on it the least out of that all. Was like most of the few that kind of. Yes, because right. everybody knows Batman, sure. and everybody kind of knows Superman. But that's the Christopher Reeve one was so early. They're like. We most people have forgotten yeah. about it. Superman's yeah. only been around for 45 years yeah. at this point. So let me ask you guys this, because we, so I asked that question to preface my next question. Um, well, be, then can I because, interrupt here and get into a different question that's going to totally derail everything? Absolutely. Okay. Go ahead. Go no, ahead, Tom. Tom. So Tom, when this did is those Tom's animated last movies episode. come out? <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Last episode of Tom. Well, cut on, Gary, cut all that out. Okay, we'll so be, because all of these other, whether it be, whether it be X-Men or Spider-Man or Superman or whatever, because all of those films had the origins in them, why did it seem, maybe it's just me, why did it seem that they didn't reach the commercial and critical success that Iron Man and the subsequent uh, uh, Marvel films did? If they're all telling origin stories, they're all telling, I, is it the way that it was told? Is yeah. it the creative vision behind it? What is it? I think it's just you. In, I, I'm not making a joke. Uh, no, I know you're not. Go ahead. In the Superman movie was wildly successful. The Batman movie in 89, wildly successful. It was like... Not the origins, version. though, with the Batman one. I would agree that Batman was on the same level, okay. for sure. Uh, but the Spider-Man, wildly successful. Like, they yeah. were all very successful. Um, I think it's just that Iron Man started to open it up to a wider universe right. where these movies were very specific to those characters. So you could get more out of that Iron Man. Yeah. And I would also say, like, for the X-Men movies that came out in 2000. Right. Like, those weren't... Uh, they make a joke about it, because he's like, what do you want me to do, wear a yellow spandex? <laughs> yes! That's what we want you to do. We want you to be a superhero. Yeah. A lot of people like those X-Men movies. Uh, they, and they're not bad they're movies. They're not bad. They're not I, bad. They're bad. I'm going to go on record. They're, those X-Men movies are terrible. I, uh, they're, they're, they're they, not, but, but, like, they, they didn't hit on that vein of... A superhero, like yes, we want you in that yellow spandex. I know it sounds stupid, but you got to make it work because that's who Wolverine is. Okay, yeah. so I w I'll explain to you where my where my question comes from, um, and maybe adjusted for inflation or something. Maybe I don't know what the box office numbers were for those original pre two thousand eight superhero films. With Iron Man, I don't know what it is about the story that they set up, set it up, but they they introduced him as this brilliant billionaire ph philanthropist. Playboy, you know, doing whatever the hell he wanted, having no regards for anybody but himself. 
And then they put him in this dire situation where he has to not only fend for his own life, but he cares about the the guy that's trapped in the uh, prison with him. Yin Sid. Yin Sid, thank you. That's why we have Tom here. <laughs> um, was that the actor? <laughs> yes, Gary. That, okay. was, that was the actor. You know, Yin Sid backwards is Disney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Strange piece of Isn't information. That, that is strange. How did Marvel know it was going to be acquired by Disney? Isn't that strange? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess with the way that they had done it, I loved how they were able to, and I talk about this all the time, I really love origin stories that humanize the character, especially when we go back, and we'll get into that in Phase 2 and 3 with Thanos, how uh, Endgame and Infinity War did a good job with Thanos' backstory doing that. But with Iron Man... I loved how they humanized him, and I, I was, I was like, I'm kind of this guy's a bit of a douchebag, and then after about thirty minutes, I'm really fucking pulling for him. It's not because he's a superhero, but just because there is a protagonist in the film, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to pull for him if they don't have some way to connect sure. with me through experiences I've had in my life or whatever, something similar to that. Then I, I may not, I may not go for him. So, do you guys think that any of these pre two thousand eight superhero films did as good of a job as Iron Man? did in setting up his origins and setting him up for future success. Like the Batmans that came out, like the X-Men's, like the original Spider-Man. What do you guys think? So, Johnny, are you saying that you identify more with Iron Man because he's a douchebag? <laughs> well, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Right, right. <laughs> Last episode, Tom. Last <laughs> one. <laughs> so, so is your question, why were the other superhero movies not as successful? Yeah, that's exactly. It. I I think the first Spider Man actually did a pretty good job. I will I'll, I'll pay homage to the first Spider Man, the Sam Raimi one from was it two thousand one, two thousand two, whatever. Two thousand two. Two thousand two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, you guys would all remember, of course. Um, I don't think as much as I enjoyed some of the X Men and a lot of the Batman films, I don't think any of them really did a very good job with that. I'm not as familiar with the original Christopher Reeve Superman ones. It's been a very long time since I've seen them, mm -hmm. so I can't you know I can't attest to that. But what do you, uh, what do you guys think? I mean, I I would say that the the writers in the Marvel movies seem to be more comic book lovers and like superhero lovers. Okay. Whereas the writers in like the X-Men movies seem to be more movie, kind of like action movie kind of lovers. Okay. Because the way that they wrote all of the Marvel movies, and it's with a very few exceptions, sure. like uh, they've been very consistent with how they set up their stories and resolve. Like they're, they're very like similar Kind of stories like the the beats in the movies are very very close right. together. It's almost like machine written, but yeah. it also works really well. Like, and they keep it fresh by I think having um, sort of movies that kind of break it up. Like the Avengers movies were kind of written in a different pattern than like all the other superhero movies um, okay. in terms of how they were paced. And I, I think that the people that wrote and made the Marvel movies were people that loved movies more than like uh just corporate people or people uh that may not have understood how what a superhero was or how it was to work okay they also understood okay. like continuity because that's what comic books are based off of is just continuity sure. in general like yeah sure we'll have our retcons here and there but a lot of the reason people go back to these characters comic book form is because they love continuing the story of those characters and i think the marvel movies do a really good job of carrying those stories forward instead of like, you know, just backward or retconning or putting in a new actor or rebooting it so often. It's like, heck no, we've got like yeah, over right. 10 yeah. years of Iron Man now. And it's like, and yeah, like, don't want to spoil an end game, but it's like to have that character be around for so long and actually see its end. It's like, it's pretty well, that's astonishing. It's a huge spoiler right there. <laughs> Way to go, Jacob. You Sorry, it for everybody. <laughs> Yeah. It's okay. We spoil tons of movies yeah. on this podcast. I would say Marvel does a lot better with the consistency. Like DC, for example, has like in 96, they had like the crisis 86. In 86, yeah. they had like the <laughs> Earth, infinite crisis or whatever. Not infinite crisis. That'd be uh, Marvel. Crisis on like infinite crisis Earths. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like they had to keep rebooting and, you know, it's and just it's not as consistent as Marvel. Yeah. And it's, a, and it's the same thing in comics these days, right? It's just like, okay, we got to do a new number one, like every five years, let's do something yeah. drastic to bump our numbers up. But like, that's what makes these movies so special is like, I can go back to Iron Man one and see things that translate to a sequel 10 years later, which is pretty cool. And I'm not even sure they really 
like because I think in the first Iron Man and the Hulk movie, those were kind of just Easter eggs they put in there for fun because they yeah. didn't realize it was going to be 30 yeah. films. They didn't they know where make. they would be at in a yeah. couple of years with actually doing an Avengers yeah. and, film. Yeah. And once they kind of understood, hey, this is a thing that's going to keep going, then they were able to start building those into stories a lot more. Yeah. But like in Iron Man, the 2008 one, uh, you see like Captain America's shield and I don't know, but I would probably suspect that they probably just put that in there just as a, hey, you know, here's a Captain America. Yeah. Everyone I mean, oh, yeah. else Captain America. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So do you, what do you, what do you guys think? Do you think that Hulk was, so Jacob, to your point, do you guys think Hulk was derailed because they did the one, they did the Ang Lee one early 2000s with Eric Banya, then they had Edward Norton, and then they jumped over Mark Ruffalo. So technically, it's a, I mean, I guess uh, the Hulk in 2008 Right. Yeah. 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 Or 2000. Um, yeah. Yeah. 2008. The Hulk in 2008, and then the new Mark Ruffalo Hulk in 2012 for the Avengers. It's the same storyline, but it right. is a different actor. So you're essentially rebooting the entire thing. Do you guys think that played a a big reason why they didn't have another Hulk film? Hulk is well not a great superhero. Like he's not exciting. Like I don't know he's. About that. He's he's better like, built for serial television. That's why like yeah. the, the old Incredible Hulk TV Blue series Fruit. works so yeah. well is because it's like Blue it's Fruit something Fruit. you can watch him go like week to week on these like little adventures in Midwest America. He's not he's not sure. much of a, a movie type character. Yeah, but also okay. uh, going back to uh, y'all might know more about the whole uh, story behind it but like also edward norton didn't he want a little too much money and that's why he got replaced by mark ruffalo um kind of the same thing happened with terrence howard and don Cheadle. yeah exactly um and and that was also that that one also sucked i mean i guess war machine wasn't as big of a part of the universe as um some of the other because he was a supporting character anyways yeah so uh absolutely yeah edward norton did want too much and also if you if you look at if you read other interviews or listen to other interviews with other directors and actors that have done films with him he's a bit of a pill to work with we talked about this in uh, our first episode today um we were talking about the different one of our uh other guests she mentioned that mark ruffalo in the first avengers movie was a little too deep and intense for her it wasn't very comic booky it, it, you know, they it, it was a little too much for the universe, and then too in the, dramatic. Yeah, it was a little too dramatic, and then then in the next Avengers, he toned it down a lot, and he came back to the same level of Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, and so forth. And Gary and I were talking about this the other night, where uh, Edward Norton is just such an intense actor, and he's just so method, and he's just. He's just—he's not a good fit. For, he's not a good fit. Yeah. That's the thing is, yeah. So maybe that also played a part in it. Maybe the the test screens that they did with audiences, maybe he didn't rate as high as Mark Ruffalo did. Maybe they tried no. it out again. Um, but he also, yeah, he he always insists on being in the editing room at the end of the production, even if he's not an executive producer or not a director or one of the screenwriters. He has to be in and give his two cents. Wow. Um, and he's apparently a bit of a douche to work with on set. I've never met the guy, but uh, if- Gary, what do you think that could possibly be like to work with somebody that <laughs> high maintenance so Can't so often? Can't wow, I, I don't know. Tom, last episode. <laughs> I think he was talking about Neil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, Neil, definitely, I'm sure. I'm sure that's who we're referring to. Uh, so, so, I, so, yeah, so for Iron Man, um, what else, do you have anything else on there, Gary, that you wanted to go over? Oh, just, uh, yeah, I mean, the it's sort of a, a basic plot. I mean, uh, guy gets captured by the Taliban, guy builds a... Uh, a suit to escape. Uh, guy gets back. That home. old plot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Classic. Yeah. Classic. Classic guy gets captured by the Taliban. <laughs> Builds a super suit. Yeah. yeah. And like, you know, uh, finds out that he loves his uh, secretary. Um, and uh, assistant, Gary, assistant. I mean, you don't find out that you love somebody. You that's, just know. That's weird. That's a weird way to put that. Are you an alien? <laughs> Are you humanity? reading a book or something? <laughs> um, so he finds out he loves her. Yeah, okay. He, he is told that he loves her. And, um, uh, you know, has to defeat, uh, what's the old guy's name? Jeff Obadiah Stane. Yeah. Obadiah Stane. There you go. Jebediah. It's got to be Jebediah. Zach Rye. It's Obadiah. It's okay, but... um, and so, like, it, it, it's, a, it's a simple movie, uh, but I think it proved the concept uh, would, would work because they kind of kept that you know it's kind of lighthearted, uh and it really matched the character like robert downey jr really nailed uh tony stark like yeah. the only other 
actor that's ever been in a superhero movie uh, that I say would get the character that well would probably be Christopher Reeve in Superman. Like, like Chris Evans nailed Chris nailed Evans, Steve Rogers pretty yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, prior yeah. to but prior to Robert Downey sure. Jr., I can't yeah. really think sure, of anybody sure. besides Christopher Reeves because, like, as like much as I love Val the Kilmer early Sam Raimi Spider Mans, it's like I and those am not the huge fan of Tommy McGuire. Of uh, his Peter, or no, I like his Peter Parker. I just don't care about his Spider Man all that much. Yeah, Spider Man Two is just really overrated. So no, Spider Man Two is a great movie. That's a great movie. Are you saying that because he wasn't like tossing quips and stuff quite as much? Oh yeah, his quips are awful. Like, here's your change. You're the one who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. It's like, oh, (laughs) come on. (laughs) Yeah, I think uh, going back to what Johnny was talking about earlier, that's kind of what made these movies bigger in a way because Mm -hmm. how Gary was saying uh, the MCU is more into comic books and less uh, corporate. Uh, I think those early Spider-Man movies were a lot more comic booky. Like they were a little too cheesy for lack of a better word. Oh yeah. Especially with Sam Raimi's style because he was, he he loves the cheese. He does. He he milks that. He spreads it on thick. And then, (laughs) These the MCU stuff, like Iron Man suit, never looked that way in the comics. They mm. made it look that way. It's all modern and cool looking. Where and that's what they do with everybody's suits now. Like in the uh, X Men movies, how they just wear the the black leather, right? Mm-hmm. But n- now there would be like even Spider Man suits. There's, there's always something going on, so it looks a lot more. I think there's a lot more modern appeal to things that. If you look back on the old Spider-Man movies or even Superman, even Christopher Reeve, he looks perfect as Superman. But that's like a very simple. So that's like something you'd buy at like a costume show. Also, like the, yeah, it's very the minimal. budgets for those movies were not nearly right. what they are now. But they would be comparable to what they would have had in Iron Man. No, I think so. No, I, I mean, Superman. If well, only you were connected to the connect- sum of human knowledge, and you could just look it up with a few keystrokes. Right. <laughs> what do you think of that, Johnny? Well, Gary checks me. Facts checks me. Uh, well, I would agree with you. I mean, I've seen pictures of how Iron Man's suit used to look, and and you're right. Outside of the colors, it's, it's yeah, it's it's not identical. Um, at all you know Mm. i i like i think you have to especially if you're doing a large blockbuster film like that and especially if you're not only you're trying to attract an older audience of course so you add those origin stories in that we were talking about but if you want to attract the younger crowd you got to make them sleek looking they like that the because it makes uh, that that was marketing i guarantee you that was marketing advertising you have to make a cool looking action figure you have to make a cool looking costume for a kid to wear Mm -hmm. because you're going to make a shitload of money off that after it's out <laughs> merchandising so, yeah it's and it's yeah it's all about the merchandising especially in a in big budget like that and you saw that with i'll bring up um remember the power rangers movie back in like 96 of course yeah um you know as a kid i, I fucking loved it but did they look did those suits <laughs> look like how they looked in the tv series hell no no, no. they were sleek no. they were shiny they were super they were super budget like, advanced bigger yeah. budget oh so, yeah so iron man's budget in 2008 was 140 million dollars uh, Superman's budget in 78 was 55 million, which for inflation is 183 million. So you were wrong, Tom. It was more. <laughs> this is actually more, <laughs> more, more, more expensive. Yes. You're yeah, way no, wrong, Tom. I, I, I was, I'm aware of the fact that they went all out. They're like, we're going to make this awesome Superman movie. And I've had dad say to me before in a conversation, he's like, I watched that movie and like, I believed a man could fly. I've never seen because he's like in the old George Reeve TV shows. He'd always have to jump and, you know, jump out a window, get off screen. And he's like, and Christopher Reeve just like reached up and glided off. And yeah, they went glid off. Oh, no. (laughs) Jeez, that's a different movie. (laughs) So Tony Stark says in. Uh, We're talking about Superman right now. Okay. Yeah. Tony Stark says in the first Iron Man, uh, he says, I'm just not the hero type. Do we feel like we rooted, rooted? Yeah, right. Do we feel like we rooted for him as I think we did with Steve Rogers? And we'll get to Captain America in a second. But do we think we rooted for him because he was maybe possibly the prototypical 
anti-hero, which we've talked about in other episodes before, uh, the anti-hero being the hero and us rooting for them because it's unconventional and we like to see something new. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Jacob, what do you think about that? Do you think that yeah, was the reason he, that uh, he became so popular? He was, he was he was also just so different. Like like we mentioned earlier, Robert Downey Jr. like like owned that role immediately where he was like, uh, when he was talking, like even in the trailers, when he's just like, that's how I did it, that's how my dad did it, and that's how America does it. And I think we made it out so far, or whatever that line was. It was just like there was this pompous, snarky attitude to Tony Stark that really shined through in the trailers immediately and got you like hooked. And then when you see like the progression of his character throughout, I mean, not only the trailer, but through the movie, and you saw him become a little bit more humble, a little bit more modest, you know, accepting right. his consequences of his actions. Um, the usual tip like superhero cycle right but to have it happen to like this billionaire philanthropist was like so much different than just like you know like a geek at high school who gets bit by a spider it was just it was at that time a little bit more interesting to see that happen to like an asshole versus some kid you know somebody you can relate to johnny yeah <laughs> And I'm not even going to say Tom <laughs> okay, for last, last episode because everybody right. knows now. <laughs> <laughs> and but and, yeah, I, and go ahead, Jacob. Sorry. And also at that time, I mean, think like 2008. That was kind of when social media was also like kind of hitting its like its height, yeah. really. Like MySpace was getting really big. Facebook yeah. had just come out. Yeah. And so having that was like I remember Iron Man one and even Dark Knight because Dark Knight came out the same year and that was like right. the hypest movie summer. Uh, of my teenage years because it's and like holy was awesome <laughs> yeah and then i think also because of batman begins it's it brought back like there was a gravitas to superhero movies again they weren't just like super right. dorky or something they like, could actually be good decent character dramas and to have like iron man and dark knight like sort of continue that it was just like like kind of fist pumping um and but to have all those shared throughout social media be like dude check out this this iron man trailer isn't this awesome and then also have the black sabbath song like play through the trailer it was just like hell yeah mm -hmm. i definitely want to see this movie because it's like it's taking the the passion and the love of the comics and it's wearing it on, on its sleeve instead of like hiding it out of shame like what i feel like a lot of those early 2000s comic, comic book movies did like the the first x-men while i love uh, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, like doing the whole like edgy black leather and stuff just felt like so anti everything that was comic books. Like yeah. comic books are colorful. Yeah. Those characters are supposed to, they're supposed to pop out of the page, not be edgy downers. Unless you're talking about Spawn or something like or that. Blade yeah, or something. Yeah, like, yeah, the usual Batman. edge, like, yeah, Batman. And, but even, even like, even Christian Bale's Batman and uh, Batman Begins, like did a lot with that character and brought it back to, like to the limelight after the travesty that was like Batman and Robin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was a movie. That I tried to forget about that one. But I, I think I, so. I pulled that line from the movie because the I'm not, I'm just not the hero type because uh, that sort of starts the ball off with Tony Stark's character arc, <clears throat> um, and one of the brilliant things that Marvel does is how well it writes its people and its characters um to really like just beats the hell out of dc um with this because like you can relate to them a lot more so tony stark starts off as someone who's very like i'm not a hero i'm not going to do this um and by the end of end game um he is a hero like he fully he, embraced he, it yeah, yeah like he, he becomes a hero um and i think marvel the the secret to marvel's success is that it has characters that that grow and develop and change um and uh get better you know they you know it's it's a character arc and you don't really get that a lot with movies yeah you look like at star wars if you look at other successful franchises let's say we look at i'm gonna keep going back to pre pre iron man if we look at the batman franchise and we look at maybe even the superman franchise you the brothers Elmore can uh, talk more about the Superman franchise. I'm not quite as familiar with it, um, but at least for Batman, you don't see, it's like a new, even with the same actor in back-to-back -back movies, it still seemed like the same Bruce Wayne. I don't see Bruce Wayne growing. I don't see him adding any new dimension to himself as a human or a hero really outside of new technology. Um, and so I'm just, it's a, it's an action movie. That's it. The Marvel movies, for me was the first time it had actually implemented the drama aspect and the aspect of emotional connection between the audience and the characters on screen. Um, 
I don't know if I'd agree to that. I think Spider Man Two and Spider Man One also. Yeah, Spider Man One and Two, I think, did that really well. Spider Man may have been the only series I can think. Of. I mean, do you do you think that any of the Batman's or Superman's or X Men's or Blades or any any of those franchises did that? Spider Man, I can agree with you on yeah. Spider Man. I'll agree with you on Spider Man. I would say that not every protagonist has to go through an arc to be an interesting protagonist. I disagree. But uh, I mean, there's lots of examples throughout uh, history of like stories that go on like King Arthur. He's always just been noble and we just stay with him and we see how this personality uh, has to conflict with all these other, you know, things going on. Well, uh, OK, so, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure to some people that's interesting to me personally. I never really got into the King Arthur tales, um, you know, uh I mean, okay, so my, my dad actually used to be really good, really big into the uh, Tarzan tales and the Tarzan stories that were written. And you saw Tarzan make, obviously, his jump was pretty significant because he went from essentially this primitive human being to a somewhat member of society, you know, over the course of um, however long the stories were being told. And I don't remember all of them, but I do remember that there was always an arc for him. And I loved that character. My dad would tell me, he'd read the book and then he would tell me the tales like over a course of a few weeks and he would break it up. And, and that would be like my bedtime story. And I loved it because he became more than he was at the onset. And I liked that. Um, and that might just be a personal preference for me. Um, you know, what's funny is that there's actually a song called Superman Song, and it compares him to Tarzan. Oh, okay. Who 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 sang that? Gary, look that up. I can't stand. No, to not fly. that one. <laughs> Do you know how many Superman I'm songs there are? Because I'm night. Superman and I can fly all the way home. That is exactly how it goes. That's not a song. I just made it up. Uh, so let's 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 move in here. Let's move on because uh, Iron Man is is certainly an interesting one, and we'll also get to more of him later. Uh, we kind of touched on it earlier, but the Incredible Hulk. Or Hulk, I guess, as... Can so, we play songs no. on this, or...? Gary could add it later. Oh. Gary, you can edit this in later if you want to. You can add that song in. I'm going to put a Crashed Test Dummies song on? No, no that's it's it's all right. It's Crashed Test Dummies. No. <laughs> so, Gary, you, Just you, send that to you, had, Johnny you had the Hulk in there for our, our, second, our second option here. Yeah, so, I did. So, the Hulk... Give uh, us the synopsis. What's going on with it? This is the Edward Norton Hulk, so... Uh, you know, it's uh, came out the same year as Iron Man. Um, the it, to me, like the Hulk, just doesn't make as good of a movie. Like um, I think Edward Norton, like I, I really like Tim Roth. I thought he was a really uh, interesting character. Tim Roth is always intriguing. Yeah, yeah. He's an actor. Um, then you also had uh, Sam Elliott. Uh, oh no, um, that was the two thousand three. William Hurt. Yeah, um, and his love, and they tried to humanize him again with a love interest this time mm -hmm. with Liv Tyler. And yeah. while Liv Tyler is beautiful and a decent actress i i just never i just never there was no chemistry should have had between lady hulk it could have had the she hulk she hulk, she -Hulk? yeah uh, you know, she, I think she hulk's his cousin that out she hulk's his cousin okay yeah. well hey yeah. you know oh, what game, game of thrones popularized uh you know infidelity so oh uh, god it's incestuality uh, incestuality excuse me um both actually both, yeah <laughs> you know. um but um yeah i just like because William Hurt was also in the Marvel movies, right? He was. He uh, was. He he played. Uh, God, what was his name? Jacob or Tom? Or the character that William Hurt played? I believe that's Thunderbolt General Ross. Thunderbolt Ross. No, Thunderbolt no, Ross. in okay. the Marvel movies, he was like. A, yeah, that's him. That's what, him. Who the hell do you think I'm talking about? Yeah, who, Didn't wasn't he like a government guy? Like a, not a general, but like no, a, he he started in the, the same Hulk. Character. He was the general, and then he became like the. Yeah. Secretary of Defense something or whatever. Or, yeah. I don't know. He like he shows person. like he he he's an incredible Hulk and he doesn't show back up until Captain America Civil War. Civil War, yeah. Exactly. Mm, okay. So yeah, but like uh But it just out of out of all of I've seen every single Marvel film multiple times, and the only there's only probably three that I wouldn't watch again. And the Hulk was one of them. Wow. I just it just wasn't good. You know, it... It, it, it didn't have that the same like Jacob you were talking about that comic book feel to it um, there are parts in comic book films where it can it's okay to be campy you know yeah. because it's that style of a universe and Hulk went just way too dramatic for me it didn't even go dramatic it went dark like they just tried to they just tried to go as dark as possible and yeah. um, it just uh, it just really I don't know it just it really bothered me um, how did you feel about the Ang Lee Hulk 
hated it too. I actually yeah. hated the cinematography and editing where they tried to make it look like, like a comic book. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Innovative idea. Um, horribly executed. I like that part. That was the only I part of it, it I liked. I hated that part. It made me I sick, al- honestly. I also hated the part where he was like fighting in the sky. As well. yeah, <laughs> fighting Nick Nolte. <laughs> freeze frames or something, <laughs> if I recall correctly. Jacob, go ahead. You were trying to say? Uh, I was going to say, so ironically, that's what I do like about Incredible Hulk because that's what I love about the character of the Hulk. It's basically Jekyll and Hyde, man versus himself, man versus the monster. So like, like that deep, dark inner character drama, that's the stuff I love about the Hulk. Um, besides Spider-Man, he's like the only, like one of the, he, him, Spider-Man, and Batman are like kind of the only comic books I pick up these days. Uh, right. But it's mostly because Hulk is very horror now. It's very much a horror book. But I, I liked a lot of that inner character turmoil that he was going through. Like I liked it that he mm-hmm. basically him, you know, try to work through his shit. Like he was like working on meditation, martial arts. And then uh, when he like one of my favorite parts of that movie is like even when he gets a cut on his finger or whatever, just like the small things in that film, I thought were kind of neat. Like when he gets a cut on his finger, he's like, oh, shit. He finds like he has to go and find the glass that the blood drops on because he knows how toxic his own body is and then just uses like super glue to put it back on. It was just like, yeah, because the being the Hulk would fucking suck. Like I liked a lot of that inner stuff, <laughs> but uh-huh. uh, but. No, I definitely I definitely get where you're coming from, because even when it does, even when the Hulk shows up, it's not as cool as you want it to be. It's not until like the very end of the movie when you get that climactic fight. That's awesome. But yeah, like uh, uh, Tim Roth is so cool and having him sort of be the proto Captain America, because I remember seeing that movie in theaters and the part where he's like running across the field after being injected with the proto super soldier serum. I was like, holy shit, that's what super, that's what Captain America is going to look like on screen. And it works because there's that scene where you watch him run past all the soldiers. But like, yeah, I, I kind of wish there was more to this movie than there actually was. It just kind of felt um uh like a little underdeveloped i think there could have been like uh, like i said earlier i think the hulk works better on a television like almost miniseries rather than rather than a film sure absolutely tom what did you what did you think of of hulk as a whole not even necessarily compared to the ang lee film but in general just as a movie like with the comics did you because you you've read basically all of these at some point in your life did you were you a huge fan of the incredible hulk as a kid when you were reading the comics um not as the in the comics but okay. in the tv show was always big in our household mm-hmm. um and i have to agree that i think i don't know if it's just the small screen itself uh, or if <clears throat> it just plays better as sort of a serial kind of thing where right. you've got this dr jekyll jekyll and mr hyde character who's got to overcome you know his anger he plays a lot like um uh, uh, Iron Man, frankly, where he's got this oh. thing that uh, he's got to get over. With Iron Man, it's his self-destructive tendencies, and with the Hulk, it's like his anger, and he's like he gets mad at all these social injustices, basically. So you've got a very similar. I don't if Iron Man can work as a movie, I don't see why Hulk can't. But I I don't think they've ever found their stride yeah. with that character in that way. So it's like, interesting because. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Iron Man to get over his problems, like his self destructing, he tries to overcome them, and the Hulk just gives in. So, well, he's he's always angry. Banner is about controlling; like he doesn't want to experience that because he's he's all he's all brains, and he doesn't want to allow his and no balls. <laughs> <laughs> so they're after Hulk. Ignoring Gary's comment. <laughs> Last episode, Gary. Thank God. <laughs> The end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> the end. All your comment. Okay. Gary, um, cut this out. No. He, he st- so, so, Gary, you had put down on the itinerary today. Bruce Banner stated, I don't want to control it. I want to get rid of it. And it, it is for that reason yeah. that Tom just mentioned. Sure. Yeah. Um, God, it's, it's just such a shame. I feel like Hulk is a, such a popular hero even before this, even before the movies came out. He's big. You know? Yeah. No pun intended. Like, he's just... Yeah. <laughs> He's, he's all those uh, animated things. Well, he's great mm-hmm. in them. Like, but yeah. he's never the driving force. Even in um, the World War Hulk animated movie, yeah, he's more of like a Mad Max ride along really? character. Okay. Yeah, and it's he's just kind of in this scenario that plays out around him, and he affects it. But 
it's not about the Hulk, really. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to direct your focus on him for very long. I wonder I wonder if that's maybe one of the reasons is and correct me if I'm wrong, but typically when the hero is a hero, they're normally somewhat well spoken. They're typically, you know, they're not they don't have to be intellect necessarily, but uh, they can form coherent sentences. When he is the actual green monster Hulk, can't really talk much. I don't know. Do you think that maybe played into him not being as popular as uh, the witty banter of Iron Man or the um, the you know the the like no, patriotism yeah, of no. Captain America? I don't know. Like, I I mean, because I think you can get all of that when he's Bruce Banner. So I don't think you lose out on being able to understand what he's doing and right. why. Um, he's still not Banner the entire time, though. So, like, do you think even, like, the 25 minutes of the film that he is the Hulk, or 20, what, however long it was, does that detract from the character itself? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say because, like, there's other ways to communicate than, you know, words. So I, I don't think that that detracts. There's balls. <laughs> well, also, <laughs> I think... Last episode, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I also think, like, Bruce Banner's character doesn't sort of adhere to, like, you know, Bing Bombastic theatrical releases like when you watch mm-hmm. a tony stark on screen even when he's by himself he's super entertaining like like sure. just the parts where he's like talking test- to the robots and- yeah talking to robots testing out mark one and just like fucking around in his lab it's hilarious like it, you want to watch him do that stuff but while bruce banner on the other hand he's not that kind of person like he's quiet timid shy he just wants to be sort of left alone and it's like when you see that in theaters it doesn't really resonate as much um, and that's why it's like it that like he works better on a small scale. But, but until the Hulk shows up, like when the Hulk shows up, that's when you can have that sort of grand scale. And that's why at the end of even like the first Avengers, when you get that Hulk smash moment from Cap right. and you get to see Hulk just go all out. That was like that was the Hulk you wanted to see, which we never really got to see before that. Um, while Bruce Banner is just not not the sort of uh, big screen hero that the world needs, (laughs) but it's the one they deserve. No, Um, (laughs) it's tough. It's it's tough with the Hulk because like the Hulk's on such a different power level than sure. Like Captain America, like, you know, street uh, level versus what was, what'd you call it, Tom? Um, At least world, world world power. Captain America is just uh, a really strong guy. Like, Above above what peak human is, so like just sure. a little bit though, like might be like a Spider Man level. No, not even anywhere not close, even close to Spider Man. Yeah. Um, like he might be able, like Captain America oh. could probably lift like eight hundred pounds, but like the Hulk can like rip worlds apart. I mean, like right, it's yeah. like it can, <laughs> like like so it's hard to have like the Hulk being full Hulk on uh, when like on, you're, all, like on at all times almost. It's like yeah. You're just like sitting, you're like, when you watch a Hulk movie, you're like looking at your watch, like, when the fuck is he going to show up? Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, with Cap, it's like, Cap is always Cap. It's the same thing with like Batman and Bruce Wayne. It's like Bruce Wayne's always Batman. He's doing something Batman right now. We just don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, I think that's why it's hard to have a Hulk movie because he's just so outcla- he outclasses everybody else in power level. Like, it's not mm-hmm. the same kind of thing. You know, okay, but uh, yeah, I I don't think the Hulk movies generally work out well because yeah. mainly the last two have not. So it, it's <laughs> mainly a seek and find with uh, General Thunderballs and uh, the Hulk. General what? Thunderballs, <laughs> a seek and find with General Thunderballs. <laughs> what's going on? What's happening? What is what, what's happening to this podcast? Uh, Gary, you're derailing us. Uh, uh, Gary, last episode. Tom yeah, right. okay. Um, <laughs> so just out of curiosity. Hulk, worst Marvel film, yes or no, Tom? Mm, pass. Pa- no, 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 no. That is not how this game plays, Tom. We're not paying you twenty five thousand an episode. Are you to tell me to pass? <laughs> I abstain. No, That's Tom. Gary, leave that in. That is now canon. Um, <laughs> are you saying out of all phases, or are we restricting it to phase one? All phases. Oh, geez. I'm gonna say no. I don't think it's the worst. Okay, Gary. Uh, no, I think Thor Ragnarok's the worst. <laughs> what? Get out of here! Thor Ragnarok is not the worst. You didn't you need say to go, anything. You need to. You I didn't need know, to go I back. Waiting to see if you need to go back and watch Thor Ragnarok. Oh, I was, was on the same level with you, <laughs> and then I watched it a second time, and I was like, "This isn't bad." No, look. Here's here's the real truth about Thor Ragnarok. It's definitely the worst one. It's in phase three, Tom. It's, this is phase one. 
Keep going. You told me I could specifically <laughs> choose from any Tom, of I'm not paying you $25,000 an episode <laughs> to say whatever you want. To say whatever you read want. Read the script. <laughs> Just read the script. <laughs> okay. I, I am I David say, Mamet. I won't say person. anything. <laughs> Wait. Uh, Jacob, least favorite Marvel film. Is it Hulk? No, it is, uh, is not my least favorite movie. Okay. Okay. I have to, I'd have to say it's my second least favorite. After my Ragnarok. least favorite is coming up right now. No, not after Ragnarok. <laughs> which is your least favorite? favorite? Iron Man 2, which we're about to get to. Even even less than Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3 was... I don't know when the last time you saw Iron Man 3 was, but it wasn't that bad. Okay, so <laughs> Iron Man 2. Uh, I mean, it wasn't great, but it's so the middle tier. Okay. You know? After the success of uh, Iron Man, um, and the Hulk did bring in some money, um, they all did. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> they decided to make Iron Man 2 a sequel to it. Um, and uh, this one, um, he's got to contend with Whiplash. Which, 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 oh, lame, God. super lame character. Tom, I but can't I can't wait for you to get my into build. the worst Where is my build? Ever. <laughs> 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 Mr. Mind. <laughs> Mr. Mind, yeah. You know who that is? Laugh. <laughs> Tom, Gary, laugh with us now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Take it away. Um, no, go ahead, Tom. What do you have to say about Iron Man 2? It's the one where he's got to fight the other suits. And I was going to say it's interesting that it seems to be Iron Man movies where everybody, like all the peripheral characters are being introduced. Like he gets all that. He's he, You've got mentioned uh, Phil Coulson here, Black Widow. Although she's not revealed to be Black Widow until the end. Correct. Unless you're an idiot. A lot of people didn't know who Black Widow was. Captain Thunderballs knew who she was. Captain Thunderballs. Captain Thunderballs knows. Yeah, they do introduce a lot it's, of. It's interesting. I never thought about Gary, that. Gary, what is uh, what's Iron Man two about? Really quick, kind of give us a brief synopsis. What, uh, uh, what happened? Basically, he doesn't have that written down. Uh, Tony Stark's <laughs> deciding like what he wants to do with his life and how he wants to um, help keep the planet safe after he's announced himself as Iron Man. So it's like, I'm going to build a, a, a shield of Iron Man around the planet. Wait, uh, no, Gary, not Iron Man Iron 3, Man. Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2, Gary. Oh, Come on. oh, this is the one with the uh, hammer, hammer time. This is, they're all the same is my point. <laughs> Jacob, <laughs> Jacob, what is, what is Iron Man 2 about, Jacob? You... <laughs> so this one, he's actually dying. The, uh, is it the tritium that's uh, in his arc yes. reactor is killing him? And so he's slowly deteriorating and he's not telling anybody about it. At the same time, Whiplash, uh, Mickey Rourke, uh, his father dies and you find out that he worked secretly with Howard Stark or his father did. And so he tries to build his own arc reactor to get revenge on Tony Stark for basically uh, usurping billions out of while leaving his family poor and hungry. Uh, and then they just come to they come to heads while introducing, like y'all said, like, well, not intro. Well, they introduce Black Widow, uh, Natasha Romanoff, but they also sort of flesh out the grander Marvel universe. Uh, they Tony gets a whole new arc reactor. Now it's a I think it's the it's the triangle instead of the circle. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you get like little hints here and there of what's to come. But uh, yeah, kind of a. Kind of a filler movie. It it's not it's not good. I don't like. It. Yeah, I mean, th this movie. I think um, Marvel sees that they're going to be able to make a lot more movies, and so they start really building the structure of what the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to hang on. Yeah. Um, and so I I think that's kind of why it feels like a stopgap. Um, and as Tom said, Iron Man doesn't really have a lot of interesting villains. Like he's got. Mm. Um, I mean, in the second movie, it's Whiplash. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, come on. So there's a lot of cool things uh, that could come say, with it. Yeah. Because because uh, the movie is kind of uh, taking aspects of the storyline Demon in the Bottle, right? Because Tony Stark's an alcoholic, and right. he, what? Yeah, and him dealing with his his uh, his him dying throughout the movie. You see him just constantly drinking and he keeps saying like, oh, yeah, it's like a shake or something. And it's like to prevent the the his arc reactor from killing him. But at the same time, how much of that is just him just like drinking himself to death, hopefully before that his arc reactor kills him. And so it's like they try to they put that in there as a little subplot, but it's never really it never really breaches the surface enough through all the other crap that's going on in that movie. And I think the movie tries to do a little too much it tries to say too much without saying nothing at all which i think also really sucks and also the um the fights are just not good 
uh, I like Sam Rockwell. The introduction to Sam Rockwell in there is great as Hammer and uh, Don Cheadle as Warhammer. I thought was good. Uh, Natasha Romanov, of course, but man, just yeah, that movie. I, I had yeah, to be so coming in got... theaters to actually enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say I went. I made the mistake of actually going to see it drunk. Um, <laughs> You're like I'm Tony Stark. I'm Tony Look at me! <laughs> jump off the <laughs> jump off the balcony. I uh, pooped myself. <laughs> Bamf, bamf, bamf. We hope that you are enjoying this rousing episode of Let Feather Productions' I Don't Give a Flick. To help us bring you more of the content that you love, please consider following us on Patreon at patreon.com slash leadfeather. There are three tiers to choose from, with special and exclusive merchandise in our VIP level. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. I want you to take what I'm about to say and put it back in the conversation. So it sounds like I brought this up at the appropriate time, but going back to what Johnny had asked a little bit ago about why are these Marvel movies more successful? Right. Uh, he, he reminded me that the, the uh, demon in a bottle thing reminds me that a lot of these are pulling from the comics. Like the MCU pulls a lot from the comics sure. and all the stuff before that kind of was just like, Let's take Superman and make up whatever the hell we want, or okay. Batman and put them in. And Marvel has, they've done a lot of, they've taken a lot of liberties with their storylines. It's, <laughs> it's like, it's not following the comics, but a lot of it's very close. So I feel like they're pulling on source material, which it helps to create like a bedrock foundation for them to make all these movies and choices on. Yeah, and it makes it a, yeah. lot, a lot more fun for the viewer too, because it's like, okay, they're basing like in interviews, it's most of the time the writers and stuff will be like, oh yeah, we're basing it sort of off of this. And then you can go out to your local comic shop and actually get those books. That was always kind of like my favorite thing with like early phase one is like, okay, they're basing this Incredible Hulk story off the John Romita Jr. run back in like early 2000s. Uh, and I'll just go and pick that up and read it and see how it translates to the screen, that kind of stuff. That was always fun. And it still is fun, especially when like uh, they show off Thanos at the uh, end of Avengers, right? It's like, oh man, they're doing Infinity Gauntlet. I'm going to go and read Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. And I mean, I think that for most people, probably like 98% of people, they have no idea what's in the comics, you know? Right. I mean, it's just like, hey, it's another, you know, superhero movie. This will be good. It's Marvel. They're not like, oh, they're following, you know, the Infinity War. Uh, well, that that one's... Pr- I remember when Infinity War came out. The and comic was, book or the movie? The movie. Well, both, but I'm talking about the movie right now. And uh, they everybody was like, oh, try not to spoil it and everything. I'm like, oh my God, what could happen in this? And then I went and saw the movie and I'm like... This is just the story. <laughs> if, <laughs> this is what's supposed to happen. You're goddamn lying to me. I, thought, I was like, what could, in the world could go on? Well, Lady Death. No. Yeah, they skipped all that. Yeah. 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 Although, I, actually, the movie turned out a lot better than the yeah. comic books did because in the mm. comics, everybody... That's right, everybody dies. No, no, yeah. no spoiler. Oh, well. Oh, oh God. Spoiler. God, last episode, Johnny. Last <laughs> episode. <laughs> He's kicking himself. I know. Oh, God. <laughs> um... He's uh, like the Hulk. He's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So, yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> where are we at here? Iron Man 2? Yeah, I think that's all we have to say on Iron Man 2, right? <laughs> oh, uh, I have one more, one more thing. Um, no. In Iron Man 2, they get Black Widow introduction, and in Thor, they get Hawkeye's introduction. So, right. apparently, obviously, they love Iron Man better. Hawkeye is awesome. Hawkeye is what a, the hell Hawkeye, are you talking Gary, about? Gary, just as a Hawkeye is only awesome from our D and D campaign. Just a heads <laughs> I was, up. I was thinking of he, he's he's not a bad character, but he's not like this fucking badass <laughs> in the Avengers films. Like yes, he is. He, he's he's taken control by Loki. Yeah. He he, ta- gets, he taken, gets beaten by a god. Oh, he's no, taken control of. I'm, I'm just saying. He's of, a dude. Okay, but he's out of the dude. top or five right, okay. most badass people in the Marvel universe, Hawkeye doesn't touch it. He doesn't yeah. even scratch the surface. And, and, well, come on now, in face. Two, uh, Age of Ultron. He's like, I'm but look at that. Yeah, that's, that's when he gets two. cool. Here, like, yeah. now. Like, like, early Hawkeye is not cool until Age of Ultron. No, there, we're not face two. Save for Gary, face two. That that is that is hilarious when he says that. He's like, I'm just a regular guy. Like, I should <laughs> be good point, here. Johnny. Like, <laughs> I, I like that part in that yeah. movie. Yeah. It was my original idea to say it first. Anyways, it was pretty insightful. I hate you so much. 
Oh God, I'm just gonna delete this. Um, so, just cut it all. So, so Tom, you were Tom did bring this up earlier about Iron Man having really horrible villains to fight for the most part. Interesting superhero, shitty Ooh. kind of made interesting by Robert Downey Jr. Yes, 100%. Um, so. Is there a superhero that has worse villains to fight in the history of comics outside that are as popular as Iron Man? Captain America. Oh, no, the ticks are great. Ticks are, Her- ticks are awesome. Her- yeah. Cheerful head. Come on. I mean, Red Skull is really the only one of his that I was familiar with because it was from the first film. Yeah. Mask um, Lady. <laughs> and that's <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> that's Mask Iron Man. You're talking Iron? about Baron Zemo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Spread off ice. Yeah. Spread <laughs> off ice. Oh, God. Um, yeah. Iron Man 2. Just, I mean, it was kind of like for me, Avengers Age of Ultron needed to happen, but it was kind of a filler movie for me. It, it, like, it, it wasn't, I didn't think it was bad. I just thought it was mediocre. It was fine. It was in the middle tier of all the. Wait, you thought. Iron Man 2 or you thought Avengers no Age Avengers of Age of Ultron okay. and I'm bringing that up because Jacob had brought up this was a bit of a filler movie Iron Man 2 but at least you no know, uh, it it introduced us like you said to Black Widow same with Vision was introduced in you know Age of Ultron so they served a purpose um, just not as large as some of the other ones um, and I guess you can't do that with a franchise every movie can't be as big as the one before it otherwise everyone's just going to get kind of tired of having their minds blown like you need kind of like to lull people to sleep and then you bring them back up that's a huge problem in comic books it's called power creep oh Oh, okay that's why superman can like throw planets around and fly Uh through the sun and Uh batman's the smartest person in the entire universe and that kind of stuff it's if things are around for a long time you got to keep up in the stakes and with comic books especially marvel with its continuity yeah uh, because if if they're like superman or Clark, we need help at the bake sale. <laughs> like, <laughs> let me go back in time. And, like, that'd, be, that'd be interesting, yeah, right? It's, like, it Superman, it's like Superman can move planets, but he can't cook some fucking cookies. Like he's terrible at baking. Yeah. <laughs> he can't bake. He can't bake an apple strudel. Uh, yeah. I would think Clark Kent would know how to cook and bake. Why? Uh, his, you know, grew up on a farm. Well, yeah, but it doesn't mean he could be good. He could still be terrible he goes back at in it. time and has his mom. Yeah. Teaching. <laughs> Yeah, true. Why did you say that name? <laughs> okay. Um, so moving on to moving our on. <laughs> next movie. Um, after uh, Iron Man two, um, we uh, we have Thor in two thousand eleven. Um, what do you think of it, Johnny? The uh, quote that I pulled from that was, uh, "Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor." Which is, of course, what Odin said before uh, tossing uh, Meow Meow through the uh, portal. The hammer, Meow Meow. You know, it doesn't say that anymore. What? It doesn't say that quote on the hammer anymore. It says, "If they be worthy." What the hell are you talking about? Well, um. In the comic books, and soon in real life, uh, or the movies at least, uh, Jane Foster gets the the hammer meow meow, and uh, she... Oh god, this sounds horrible, She becomes Thor. This is fucking awful. She is now Thor. Jesus Christ. So at that point, the hammer changes its quote to, if she be worthy. But then after that, when... When things evolve from that point, it becomes if they be if worthy. If they be worthy. <laughs> he, she, they. If we all be worthy. I'm just, I just wanted to point that out. But like Thor is the guy. It's not. I agree. It's it's not a title. It's his name. He's not the god of hammers. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, for a time, <laughs> I feel like Beta Ray Bill, Bill gets in into in the comics. He had the power to like generate hammers <laughs> out of the sky. Yeah, that's an incredibly strange it's, power to have. <laughs> well, it's not great. It, comics are kind of silly. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so um, uh, Kenneth Branagh directed this one, um, and I thought this was a really good uh, yeah, movie. Good. Uh, I thought that one of the better origin ones. Yeah. For sure. Well, what I liked about it so much was it uh, it really kept to the tone. Like uh, Iron Man really set the tone for like what an Iron Man movie is. Like snappy comedy kind of stuff. Yeah, and Thor, like, it really felt like this guy was out of time, out of place. Um, you know, he yeah, talked oddly, you know, like threw his coffee cups down on the ground saying, get me more. You well, know, no. he went into the... More ale! Went into the... Uh, like the animal store and was like, I need a horse or something. Yeah. The oh, he goes, another. And then he store? breaks it on the ground. Yeah. Breaks the horse on the ground. Another. <laughs> oh my. That would be horrible. <laughs> it's just, you see the horse snap in half. 
laugh. Well, it's okay. You can put it back together since they're made of glue. Um, Dumb. Anyway. Anyway. um, So I thought, you know, this one was really well done. Um, uh, Chris Hemsworth, I think, did a really good job at kind of capturing that character. And it still felt very, uh, it, it was very different from the feel of, uh, Iron Man in terms of the, the tone of the movie, but it still maintained like the same overall theme of this is a comic book movie and felt like that, which which I really liked. Yeah. So. Uh, Jacob, what did you think of uh, think of Thor? I mean, this is the first time he's introduced. Um, I know you've you don't really talk about him much as your as your favorite. MCU he, hero, but uh, well, because I actually didn't like him until Thor Ragnarok. Um because I remember at this time, the first Thor, I was reading J. Michael Straczynski's run on the comics uh, at that time. And that's when like Thor was kind of depowered. Asgard was like now resituated, I think, in Oklahoma. Um, and okay. things were like they brought Hulk or they brought Thor down to a more grounded level where he's talking to humanity. And so I was like, OK, cool. It'd be, see, it'd be awesome to see how they do that with the movie and the movie. I like how grandiose the beginning is. Uh, Kenneth Branagh sure. loves Dutch angles in this movie. There's so yes, many Dutch angles. Yes, he does. Um, and I, <laughs> I, I like the casting a lot. Tom Hiddleston as Loki is absolutely perfect. I love the Warriors 3. Uh, uh, you got Anthony Hopkins in there as Odin. Just it's a Odin, really yeah. cool costume design, really cool production design. Um, but yeah. Thor as a character was always too stoic for me. Like just, you know, the very Shakespearean stoicism that was always there just like never really had much you character to me you don't think they needed that though to create uh to create contrast between the other because they're building a oh, whole yeah. universe out of this you know yeah. and they you have the witty the sharp-witted uh robert downey jr and you have the um the very loyal and patriotic right um, chris Hemmer. evans and yeah or steve rogers whatever and then you have the stoic chris hemsworth as, as stoic demigod like, you don't think that was necessary Right. Yeah, and I, and I, I, I yeah, no, I, t- I definitely get that. But even like, I'm not gonna like all of the Avengers, just as like I'm not gonna like all of the Justice League, right? There's like a couple of members of the Justice League, I'm, I'm just not interested in following as much. Same thing goes with the Avengers. It's like there's like a couple of Avengers I wouldn't like go out of my way to you know follow on a regular basis, except out of like recommendations from fans, like check out this run on Thor. It's like okay, cool, I'll read that. Um, but for movie wise, it, it, like when he comes down to earth and he does all the goofy yeah. things like the another with the beard, he keeps getting run over by Jane Foster. Uh, Kat Dennings, <laughs> Kat Dennings is amazing in that movie. Uh, I'm so glad that she keeps coming back, especially in WandaVision. Um, but yeah. like his his character arc, I thought was really underdeveloped, like how he's he spends like one day on earth to learn humility uh, to you know, be human, I thought was just like just too short, at least with Tony Stark. He's what being tortured for weeks on end. He's trapped in that cave with Incid for I don't know how long, like weeks to a month. Well, it takes one day for this jock asshole to become a decent person. I just didn't buy. Um, And a lot of the action I didn't like as much, like when they fight the destroyer in Oklahoma, I think it uh, was it. Where was it? It was was it Tulsa? It was was in Oklahoma. or it was Utah? Oklahoma that they did. It was, was, it, yeah, it was Utah, Utah or Nevada. Or it was Utah or Nevada. Yeah, because they were out okay. in like the deserty mountain, mountain west area. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, but I did like how like Coulson actually plays a much larger part in this movie. Um, like he even like talks to the destroyer at one point. It's just like, can you? Hey, uh, what's going on here? And then um, uh, Loki having fun in there. Uh, the the one of my favorite Stanley cameos when he's in the truck and he's trying to move move Mjolnir like the entire the contest to move Mjolnir is really good. Uh, the Frost Giant segment actually Loki Loki story arc I love in this movie like watching yeah. him uh, watching his frustrations with being like adopted but then he you find out he's more of like a war child and it, right. his frustrations were like was he actually ever loved as a son or was he just like a trophy and it's like that stuff i really like but as thor as a character i just wasn't really into at this time okay i mean i i come i commend them for tommy I mean, you talk about one of the most beloved antagonists at least in the marvel universe i mean loki is the poster boy like, he's the poster child absolutely yeah. um when, when i mean and we're gonna 
Sorry, guys. Spoiler alerts all around. When he dies <gasps> and Gary, we're, we're not and there. Tom, or Tom, <laughs> that was Tom that made the whatever. Gas. I said when we're he not dies, there. I, I, I felt myself kind of cringe a little bit. I, you know, I didn't like shed a tear, but I was, I was sad. I was upset. I was like this. Yeah. And he, he dies and comes back in a lot of films. He must have been a method actor but, then, if that made you upset. <laughs> Um, he's not, unfortunately, Chris. Oh, that is one that I oh. like. Chris Hiddleston is a classically trained technical actor, so um, isn't it Tom Hills? Chris yeah. Hiddleston's his brother. Oh, Tom, oh yeah. he's, he's not. It's his he's twin brother. Oh, right. It's like Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. They they swap out every. Oh, ten minutes. <laughs> oh my god, that's just I child labor. You said that because of Emily Olsen. Um, <laughs> yeah, Tom Hiddleston. Excuse me. Um, okay, uh, Tom. What did you think of of Thor, the first one? Uh, well, first, let me say, I like the fact that it is so different. Sure. Because just like comic books, where I'm like, Superman's my favorite character, but Johnny might say, you know, Batman is his favorite character. He can be wrong. That's fine. <laughs> he can be wrong. Uh, Green, Green Lantern, but go ahead. Well, that's actually a good pick. Um, I think that it's it would be interesting if they had continued to hold on to that, where it's like, okay. Thor is different than Iron Man, because then... If you don't like Iron Man, go see Thor and yeah. vice versa. And it feels like they kind of wa- started watering it down there. In after the movies? Yes. After. Uh, 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 after what? After time passed. <laughs> oh, oh, is this still in phase one? <laughs> Probably. I, I, oh, imagine. I don't okay. know. Phase two or three. <laughs> 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 we can't talk about that. Yeah. Um, I thought it was. I thought it was good. I liked it. I thought it was. Uh, I feel like all of the negative points that. Uh, Jacob raised. I'm like, yeah, that's that's Thor. That's that's, that's, that's just how Thor is. That's yeah. what the yeah. character is supposed to and be. So that's why yeah. you'll you'll like certain heroes, and then there's other ones you won't. Absolutely. I like. It. I don't have any defense against any. I'm like, yeah, he talks funny, he dress funny, and yeah. Hmm. If you don't like it, bugger off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Either, as Chris Hiddleston would say, <laughs> Tom's brother. <laughs> uh, that, that's the that's the thing with uh, a lot of that's I think with. And you're, you're right. You know what? Yeah, that's that's other phases. I won't get into it. I liked at the beginning. Thank you, Johnny. Oh, oh, they, I really appreciate that. I like the dichotomy between all of the uh, all of the original heroes, and they were all different in some aspect. And you could pick and choose later on. They kind of all started to blend into the same, except for style. Captain America. Captain America stayed true to Guardians himself. of the Galaxy, but this is all phase two. No, and three. but no, Guardians no. of the Galaxy uh, was no. like that. Absolutely no. I can't what? agree with that at all. They were all, Gary. all jokey and stuff. But I say Chris Pratt is he's like. Robert Downey Jr. They're like they're like identical. Oh, I we were talking about it Benedict being, Cumberbatch being, and Doctor Strange. Being like, like a all... unique feeling for each one. Oh, oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Is that I mean, what you were saying? No, no, I was talking about their sense of humor and the style of acting that was portrayed oh, in the later okay. phases. Like all the Marvel movies, kind of you're like, oh, that's a Marvel movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anywho, um, so Gary, how did yeah. you like? Thor. Yeah, Gary, what did you think of what Thor? What did you think, Gary? Yeah, uh, Gary. Oh. Gary, last last yeah. episode, Elmore. Yeah, uh, which which one of us are you talking to? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I liked uh, I liked Thor. I thought it did a good job. Um, uh, Kenneth Branagh, I think, is a really great director, and he I is. think he um, understands how to like m- portray characters. Um, and to to Jacob's point, like yeah, all, like he, he talks differently, and I like that about him. I like that kind of Shakespearean kind of tone that he kind of gives sure. um, and i think that's probably why they attached kenneth Branagh to that a hundred percent yeah oh definitely was, he I, th- I thought he did a, a good job considering it's so different than anything else like much ado about nothing yeah mm-hmm. it's basically the same movie yeah I mean, um, wear capes but yeah. it, but like jacob said it had that shakespearean <laughs> esque to mm-hmm. it you know both with brian Oak directing and yeah. Hemsworth being classic. He had right? that in the comics as well. Did he? Okay. Yeah. See, he I never read the, the Thor comics. He talks so that way. Because I, I would say this is the first Marvel movie that um, is kind of way out there in the comics. Well, I would say this is the first one that's where it's hitting the stride. Like, from, from here on, like, they're all pretty much, like, manufactured the same way. Like, in terms it's pretty of... pretty formulaic for... I don't know if I could... I, 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 I wouldn't would, agree with... Yeah. Okay. I, I wouldn't agree with that. I would two. disagree, but my point comes from... Phase two, so I can't yeah, say anything we can't about talk it. About can't phase bring two it up. Yet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Same thing. I stay think, in the phase. I don't think they hit that formula until until like late phase two, but that's just me. Okay. Well, phase two hasn't occurred yet. Yes. Yeah, so I would appreciate you not bring the lead yeah. cinematic is universe. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Alvin Strauss? Oh God. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, moving on to uh, the best uh, movie um, is uh, it's up there. The 2011 Captain America movie. First uh, Avenger. Yeah. Tom, would you like to talk about this one? Oh, Tom loves this one. Uh, Sure. Uh, Captain America 
gets juiced on steroids and punches a uh, cripple in the face. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yes. Yeah. I think that's, that's, the, that's the synopsis of the that's film. That's basically it. it. It's just two hours of him repeatedly punching a, a crippled guy in I'll the face. I'll tell you, going going back in time a little bit, there, there used to be these things called arcades where you would go, go when you didn't have, you know, video games at your house. What's a video game? And there were cabinets where you'd have to put in a quarter or a token and oh you'd God. get to play a video game. A yeah, this is a reference game. to not the movie, but that little coin you're holding. <laughs> no, no, really upset. Okay. <laughs> but there used to be uh, Avengers video games that you would play. And there, if you were at a pizza place or something, there'd be people you don't know. Right. They would all be around. And a lot of times it, when it's like, oh, winners don't do drugs would come up on them and everybody's like, Oh, Captain America is such a hypocrite for saying that because he took superhero steroids. Performance enhancing drugs. And I'm like, that's retarded. Yeah. Because he's not taking it to win a trophy in like an athletic competition. He was trying to stop Nazis from taking over the world. So thank you for that description of the movie, Tom. It so, was, was an aside. I'm sorry. Are we not supposed to talk? Am I not allowed to discuss my own thoughts on this? He did ask you a synopsis of the film. I, I gave one that was pretty, I think it was pretty accurate. It's not if, I, if I gave you that synopsis, would you not, know what I was not. talking about? You were telling us about a time like 30, 40 years ago when you were like... At before the MCU high. started, before most of us were born. <laughs> okay. Don't look at me like that, Tom. Don't look at me like that. Wipe that fucking smirk off your face. Uh, so anyway, uh, it's the origin story of oh, Captain okay. America. Go, go ahead, Gary. Oh, do you want to do this? No, please. Okay. Be my guest. It's the origin I story. I won't make fun of you at Jacob, all. Jacob, this is why I don't let the two of them on the same episode. Oh, uh, I can tell. <laughs> Jacob, just edit this out in post. Yeah. Jacob's <laughs> not editing this. Gary's <laughs> editing this. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I, 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 I'll fix it in post. <laughs> Okay. It's the origin <laughs> story of Captain America. So he's this little scrawny guy uh, that... Uh, What's his name? During World War II, Captain America. <laughs> Jeez, Tom, I'm trying to tell the Keep story. Keep up. I said it like four times. <laughs> <laughs> What's his real name? John America. <laughs> John America. Johnny First America. Name, Captain, Johnny middle America. name, United States of. <laughs> Goes around planting America's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, middle name, United States uh, of. Anyway, so uh, it's during World War II and he's trying to sign up. What he, is his name? What is his name, Steve Tom? Steve Rogers. Okay, oh my God. You. How did you Steve not know Jesus. Tom, shut up and let Gary finish the fucking stuff. Um, <laughs> and so he's, he's trying to sign up and uh, help out the country, but he's he's too, he's too got too many medical conditions. He's got like asthma and like, you know, scoliosis and AIDS or something. He can't. <laughs> can't get into the wow i don't know if any of that is accurate outside of asthma well you never know um one out of three isn't bad (laughs) why does he have aids johnny (laughs) shut the fuck up and let gary finish his fucking synopsis (laughs) this is terrible (laughs) mark his dad cut this out (laughs) cut all this out Oh, this is uh, the worst synopsis ever. <laughs> Gary, when are you going to be done with the synopsis? <laughs> hey, come on, Gary. He gets juiced up on steroids. He <laughs> <and laughs> punches, punches, punches a cripple over and over. God, um, so, yeah. Jacob, yeah. you can take over the rest of the episode. Here we go. <laughs> sure. No, all right. Jacob, do you want to try a synopsis of Captain America? <laughs> hey, Jacob, oh, oh my out. God. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Steve Rogers is this uh, sort of young, plucky kid who has a bunch of sort of, uh, what, I don't know if I would call it defects, but he is he is smaller than normal. He's just, he, all he wants to do is help out. He, he doesn't like bullies, but he can't join right. like the armed forces because he's too small, too skinny, too weak. Um, but all he wants to do is contribute. He loves helping people. He loves he loves helping his fellow man, and he wants to go and join the armed forces and fight in World War II when his buddy Bucky um, Bucky oh my god uh, Barnes. Bucky Barnes goes off, and so uh, when they I guess it's Peggy Carter who recruits him. It's been a while since I've actually seen this one. Uh, Peggy Carter actually finds him get his ass kicked uh, in a street alley uh, after you know basically defending himself against an asshole bully and I could do this all day. And that's where we get that quintessential line. I could do this all day uh, yeah. in the alleyway. Um, and so she decides to sort of take him into this uh, test program that they're doing for the super soldier serum, which is also uh, set up by Stanley Tucci's character. Who's this, who's this um, shield scientist who has Abraham created the super Erskine? Erskine. Erskine. Erskine, thank you. Yeah, and he's created the Erskine. super soldier serum, but he wants to find the perfect uh, uh, 
test test host for it but in order to do right. so he needed we need to find someone who has the right heart rather than the like you know the right stuff um and eventually he gets he gets injected with it becomes captain america and goes on to fight hydra and hugo weaving's red skull, red skull uh, yeah. and to save the entire uh world from a, a from the tesseract i guess he was gonna use the tesseract to basically blow up the u.s at that point it's been a while well he's using it to power all of his weapons right uh, he, he was like suck it into like little tiny right. batteries but they were going to hit every major city across the world yeah so yeah there was world yeah but it was, it was like powering yeah. the airplanes and the tanks right. and the guns yeah so. just old school just end. old school stopping world domination type stuff um, yeah right but basic basic red skull kind basic of bad plan. guys yeah stuff. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so what what made for you guys i i personally yeah i i would agree with gary this is this is i don't know if it's my favorite marvel but it's certainly in my top three of well, you the don't best ones theory, it's um, not your favorite it's it's up there with red skull do you guys think that red skull outside of loki was one of the and maybe thanos was one of the best villains in the mcu overall i yes why tom why do you think he was one of the best most memorable i guess well i think that when he reforged narsil and gave it to uh strider uh -huh. it really helped no to tom what? No, he dressed up as a woman and drove around <laughs> Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I got great reference. Everybody's going to get it. <laughs> Adventures of Priscilla, <laughs> Queen, Queen of, of the Desert. Desert. God damn it. Tom, why was Red Skull so memorable? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Gary. Uh, I think when he stuck his hand through the Oracle and yep. got power of... Foresight. Yep. yep. It allowed him to okay. really circumvent. Now we've done all of Hugo oh. Weaving's other movies. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Um, the Lord of the Rings. Okay, do we do the Wolfman? Stop! What the hell's the Wolfman? It was with uh, yeah, Joe Johnson's previous film. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Anyways, uh, I think because he had his basis in like reality, like when sure. Red Skull came out, he was a Nazi. There like, were Nazis. Yeah, yeah, and it's like he just kind of embodied all the worst of that. Sure. Um, and Red Skull, he's he's uncomplicated in his motives. So you're like, I can understand what this guy's after. Right. A lot like kind of the mirror opposite of Loki. I feel like Red Skull, you're like, I know what he wants. He wants world domination. Loki, you're like, I'm never quite sure what he's after. I don't think he knows what he wants, though. Yeah. Loki kind of just always just seems kind of like, chaos or yeah. something. But like a dog, if he caught a car, he wouldn't know what to do with it. That's a terrible line. I don't know. We're talking about phase one only, not about <laughs> DC a <comics>. completely different <laughs> universe. Um, so I, I I would say that and also it's kind of tropey, but the fact that he is also the mirror opposite of Captain America, where sure. like they've got the exact same abilities. Right. So Cap right. can't just overpower him. He can't just I mean he does yeah. him eventually just punch him, but <laughs> 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 but you you know what I mean. Yeah. The moral, moral he's got the moral high ground. <laughs> I'm so glad we're paying you twenty five grand for this commentary. <laughs> just edit something in. Yeah. <laughs> Ask Jacob yeah. why he likes him. <laughs> uh, Jacob, what do you uh, do? You think do you would you agree with that <clears throat> that comment that Red Skull is one of the most memorable that MC rambling films? incoherent statement. <laughs> Yeah, he's just kind of uh he's just very much a sort of uncontroversial villain. He's just like, you know, just prototypical bad dude. He's just a Nazi. It's like we gotta kick Nazis' asses. It's just Wolfenstein, World War II stuff. It's just like there's nothing, nothing, uh nothing contriving against him. It's just like like that's the guy we just wanna go and beat his ass. He's the final boss. We don't have to worry about some stupid backstory to sort of humanize him it's like no this guy's an asshole he will always be an asshole let's kill him right um, just and kill he, also just a very uh, memorable design too right like you have the red skull sure. in his nazi it's uniform or hydra right? uniform um so it's just like he's a he's a good villain i wouldn't say in 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 comic books yes a very memorable villain in the in the mcu Mm, give it or uh you can it's give or take i mean it all depends on like hugo weaving's performance i think hugo weaving really leans into it a lot and i think it's mostly due to his his talent is why that villain kind of comes off the screen a little bit more but like sure. well, same with downey jr and, and iron man it's that same yeah thing. but while like if 
I mean, if there was a character I kept, I wanted to come back over and over again throughout the MCU, it was definitely Red Skull for sure. Cause it's like, there's more we can do with this character. And I thought he was going to, sh- I thought like, uh, I guess future yeah, spoilers I for the Winter Soldier. That's who I thought uh, Robert Redford was going to turn out to be. And I was like, oh man, this is totally going to be Red Skull. And it wasn't. Um, but yeah. That's phase two. He's yeah. all He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> he's all right. He's so here, here's here's the thing. We talked originally about um, well, we talked originally about a lot of these characters not necessarily being super mainstream before Iron Man came out Absolutely in 08. Not, yeah. Um So I can t- Iron Man for me and Incredible Hulk less so because you saw all of the cartoons for them in the 90s uh, and early 2000s. So I was a little more familiar with them. Captain America, I had heard of Captain America plenty of times, but I didn't know anything about him. And when that first movie came out, I just absolutely fell in love. And he ended up becoming, still to to this day, is my favorite hero in the MCU um, overall. So, Gary, I know this is your this is your favorite Marvel movie, right? And John what, agrees with you. What, <laughs> it's up there. What ha- what happened? Why, why is this one, at least for you, at the top of the pack? Why is this the best? Why is this the best one? What makes Captain America so so memorable outside of him just being having America. America's ass? Yeah, having America's ass. That's right. I'm still kind of giggling over the Priscilla Queen of the Desert. Thank right? you. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was very nice. Tom, when I say last episode, <laughs> I mean, I'm cutting you from this episode early. <laughs> um, of course, I've got my $50,000 <laughs> sign in. God damn it. Um, Gary, what well, do you think? For, for, for me, Captain America is the just the, the best type of hero because okay. if you strip away everything he's got like he doesn't have a lot of superpowers but if you strip away his uh, performance enhancing drugs <laughs> um, would you say he has any superpowers um really. no not really super skilled but like, like black widow or hawkeye honestly like, yeah yeah um but like I, I think when you get right down to it he's got what every hero needs to have and that's an indestructible shield yeah exactly yeah. no um <laughs> Heart, uh, spirit uh that's uh he's got the will to to carry on like uh the like great the, song yeah the the best part of uh Wait, probably you know. any of the marvel movies um is in this captain america movie i think when um he's talking to dr erskine um and he's like doc, the doctor's telling him like after the procedure you know no matter what happens tomorrow promise me something not that you'll be a perfect soldier but a good man and you know uh that's what captain america tries to do uh, all the time really and thing. even though he's way outclassed by everybody yeah. else in the freaking movie like he's like going up against uh, thanos and like iron man and yeah. spider-man he still um, digs in tries to hold the fist back with yeah you which, know, which phase is three i know but yeah 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 johnny <laughs> come on your jonathan own. come on jonathan <laughs> like captain america to me is he's just got so much heart and he he just he he tries and strives for that like um you you see him like in phase three when like he's his arms broken and he just cinches up his shield because he's like i gotta do this and he's just one guy standing there against thanos and everything he's like it goes back to the same thing we talked about we talked about iron man is the unconventional hero people like an anti-hero people Mm -hmm. also love an underdog people also like the regular guy in the street jacob you talk about the alleyway scene he's like i could do this all day who didn't get pumped up when he said that who didn't think i'm gonna go and yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna gonna go i hope there's somebody mugging somebody outside so i can defend him i don't know something along those lines what's interesting is how great that is and that's not from like the comics or anything. No. Whoever yep. doing oh, that it's not? movie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was good, totally good, good script writing. Yeah. yeah. Good dialogue. Yeah. You know? I didn't think that was going to come back around and then just keep yeah. doing it. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much yeah, when, when Tommy Lee Jones right. When yeah. Tommy Lee Jones throws the grenade in, in the middle of all oh, those soldiers, yeah. he dives on it. He says, everybody get back. Grenade. You know? Grenade. He he jumps smart. on it. And yeah. that big guy, he was he's like, this guy will do it. And he, everybody just yeah. runs off. Yeah. And like the little tiny guy who's got nothing. And then like, he can't like run enough. And like, so he's just like, whoever, if you can get the flag off the thing, uh, you are ride in the car. And he's just like, he looks Very at Mulan. it. And he, he pulls out the pin and the <laughs> yeah. flagpole falls over. Like, like Brains over brawn. Cat, yeah, and, yeah, 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 and right. Captain America it just embodies that so well. Um, and like he he makes mistakes in the movies. Like um, he he doesn't tell Iron Man or Tony Stark that uh, uh, Bucky killed his parents, and he's like, I regret doing that. I was trying to help you, but maybe that was only trying to help me, really. 
Yeah. I, oh, phase two. Sorry, sorry. Although, <laughs> obviously, Tony Stark would have freaked out at that. Yeah, point. I mean, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It was the right thing to that do. That would have yeah. totally screwed the Avengers up a lot earlier. But, yeah. but like, um, you know, he he's just, uh, to me, the, the quintessential and the best of the heroes, even though he's not the strongest or the fastest or the smartest. Uh, I think he's... Uh, got the moral integrity that's that's uh, that outclasses everyone else. Sure, and he yeah. pr- he he provides that natural leadership, which is also the thing. Like, yeah, that's his true strength. You, and you talk about he's also, and we so we 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 D and D, and we did a Marvel campaign around when like Civil War came out. Um, that was like about what six months, eight months, because we saw Civil War right before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that happened. Um, so. He's a he's one of the most skilled just fighters in general, like hand to hand combat. Yes, he's up there. And as far as with his military training, tactically, strat- strategic as, as far as strategy goes, strategy, you know, um, <laughs> he he's up there. You know, um, so I I think you know he's certainly he has that aspect, but he also has other things as well. You know, the the Avengers individually are very powerful by themselves, but they need somebody to lead them, and mm-hmm. it's kind of a a, a dual pronged attack between him and iron man yeah and i think um, even chris no. chris evans like originally i never would have thought like oh yeah chris evans would be the guy that would sort of have that gravitas to be the leader of the avengers yeah johnny Cause, storm because like <laughs> in the comics and stuff you're always like yeah the cap is cap like there's nobody else who can mm-hmm. top him and i mean even the x-men movies like i hate cyclops <laughs> but but even when i saw cyclops in the comics i was like he's the fucking leader of the X-Men and this is why while the movies never showed that and I was kind of afraid the same thing would have would happen with mm-hmm. Cap is like Robert Downey Jr.'s presence would overshadow like Chris Evans's uh, performance it's as so Captain terrible. America but no like he he's able to stand toe to toe on a different level with Robert Downey Jr. in those scenes and he has that gravitas he like his entire I guess uh presence sort of commands a sort of respect that you wouldn't normally expect of chris evans and uh his portrayal of steve rogers but it works really well and like yeah cap becomes like easily one of the best parts and when you see cap on screen in the avengers movies you're like fuck yeah like throw that fist in the air man that's right that's right i don't have any idea how they can Continue on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know that's me. Well, well, four. Yes. Four, You've so. gotten rid of two of the best characters with Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans both leaving. Yeah. Like, I feel like gonna, you might have been able to limp on without Robert Downey Jr. But if you look, not without both. Yeah. You lose your your top two, like your the your, heart and soul. Yeah. Your, the face of the entire, there's there's two of them and they both, I mean, I think. Two face, really. Which was played by Tommy Lee Jones, who was in the Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back around full circle. Six degrees of separation. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, so let's jump in uh, just for time's sake because I feel like we're going to talk about this one a little bit more and we have another episode to get to after this um, oh sorry I didn't mean to first, hold you up. shut up Tom it's your last episode anyways what do you care okay, well, um, yeah. the first Avengers movie titled The Avengers yes this is where we uh, we first was this the first one we witnessed Thanos interjecting yeah yes. um, just like it was right yeah, yeah. Okay. that was just a the cutscene at the end, I think, right? Right. Yeah. Just well, he's the one that gives Loki the that yeah. gives Loki the army. Um, but oh, so, maybe well, no. I, it's like, hard to remember the order of the cutscenes. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't see him until the very end. But his emissary is the one okay. who gives Loki the scepter. Yeah, right, that's right. 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 That's okay, right. Thank you. Right. The one who's um, just talking okay. the entire time. <laughs> so, so we're gonna try this again for the last one, Tom. I'm gonna let you do the synopsis on this one. Okay. Okay. Why don't you explain to us? What the Avengers is. The movie. Please. The movie. movie. Okay, all right. If you... (laughs) Gary, just... The movie (laughs) buys... I was going to do the... He was thinking of it. Sean Connery is dressed in a bear suit. (laughs) Okay, you got me. That's League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, my God. Um, Okay, so... Let's see. All all of this has come to a head. Like, uh, at the end credit scenes of all these movies, Nick Fury's been hinting that uh, I'm trying to start this initiative that he got from uh, Carol Danvers. He got the name for for that, as we all know. That's phase three. But it was in the past. Stop. Okay. Stop. (laughs) Um, So, and we've all been looking forward to it. Uh, It was pretty much hinted at in Captain America's title. I don't know why they did that. Mm -hmm. Should have just been Captain America. Um, And eventually, I think they found the Tesseract and like Loki gets a hold of it, if I'm right. recalling this correctly. Right. Correct. Yep. And so uh, he blows up the base they're in, and Nick Fury's like, well, 
what am I going to do? Shoot him? Shoot this god? Uh, and he's, you know, also getting everybody's... Controlling their minds. Controlling their minds. And um, so he's like... He's well, also got Hawkeye under his control now, too. Yeah, he has Hawkeye, which is... It's a good one Overpowering, yeah. You can't... Jesus. What are you going to do? Bring Thor against that? Um, yes. <laughs> bring any of the Avengers against bring that. Anybody? We have a Hulk. I have a Hawkeye. Whoa, 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 hey, whoa, hey, whoa, hey. Hey, you, got a, you got an archer. <laughs> God, his look in that last movie was so bad with his dumb hair and everything. I didn't mind it, actually. But anyways, well, look at phase three, Tom. Phase three. Oh, okay. okay. Back to phase um, one. <laughs> so at that point, he's like, well, he goes to that shadow council. Does anything ever happen with that, by the way? Or is that a That comes thread? back in uh, uh, Civil War. Or, Does it? No, Winter oh, Soldier. Okay, so a different, yeah. different phase. Yeah. You guys handle that later. Uh, and he's like, I want to start this. And they're like, well, I mean... You're going to do what you're going to do. So we can't stop <laughs> you. Stop. You've got Hawkeye. What, how can we stop that? Um, so they they form the Avengers um, and everybody's happy. <laughs> Actually, I don't think they even formed the Avengers <laughs> right away. <laughs> you're terrible at this. <laughs> My God. <laughs> it's been like a decade since I've seen this movie. And then um, so uh, they're like, OK, Hawkeye, go get your friends. Call Tony Stark and call Captain America. He's punching a bag right now, but you know where that is because you have eagle vision. So, so this Tom's not going to give the synopsis. Of Gary, you want to get so take goes, a whack at it? And then he's like, "Okay, Black Widow, you're sleeping with this man, and after that, go no. grab the Hulk." And she's like, "I don't want to do okay, that." Okay, because scary monster. I'm just gonna touch his palm. <laughs> it's, it's getting real sunny. Jim, sunny Jim. It's getting, the sun's so, getting real low. So in, in the Avengers movie, um, it was interesting because uh, they they bring all of the superheroes that they leave all that in created together um, in, in, in into Tom's one side. movie to kind of. And it really feels like I a, literally a just said this. Would you stop interrupting? It really feels like just a close to the first chapter uh, because right. they they have all of these plot threads that have started to open. Uh, For five get, years get we've closed. been leading up to this. Yeah. And here we are finally. Exactly. And, uh, you know, Loki comes in and he's he's made a deal with Thanos to get a, an army of uh, people and monsters. And uh, well and said, Gary. Perfect. This is, this is the worst synopsis I've ever heard. This is better and, than our first one. <laughs> and uh, Rude. They, uh, it, it forces them to form the Avengers because they're a group of disparate people that don't really know each other, but they recognize they have to come together in order to save Earth, and if they can't save it, they can damn well avenge it, as I feel like they uh, Tony Stark says. Didn't get anywhere near that until, like, they're like, I'm just going to try and do this on my own. And in isn't that what happened? Because at then, the beginning, remember they have the fight where uh, they go ahead and get Loki, and it's and Captain America. Right, Thor shows up, and they end up getting. And that's there's the big battle between between him, Cap, and Iron Man. Right there in the forest. Remember they're in the. Forest. Remember, in the it might be in the redwoods. It was super tall yeah. tree. It was um, a great foil to the last battle when they're fighting together because they're in this sure. like destroyed yeah. ruin. Right. Right. Wait. What? When are you? The done? last battle they're fighting in uh, End Game. That's face. That's, yeah. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, I guess that was. That wasn't a ruin that was outside the Avengers. Yeah, can we please focus? Yeah, let's face it. This is the worst synopsis Stop. we've ever done. Tom, shut up. Uh, this is y'all's last basically they just, yeah, podcast. They, 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 they let us know where everybody is, and they come together to fight Loki. He's trying to take over Earth with Thanos' army, essentially. Um, but the important part about this is the fact that it's, like you said, it's the end of the first act, you know, or the end of the first chapter. If you yes, I did say that. that. Well, Gary said that. Well, I was making that point. I see. Okay. Tom, very insightful. No, Wonderful it's job. MCU. Oh, for God's sake. That last episode, Tom. <laughs> that I see. Yeah. This is the okay. first episode of the end. Um, where we end... <laughs> no, it's in game. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Gary, slap him, please. <laughs> <laughs> is that what Tom sounds when you slap him? Just... Oh my! Wow, rude. I'm Jacob. sorry. I'm sorry. My scream when my little brother slaps me isn't masculine enough for you, Jacob. Would you like to try and sum this? I feel like we're we doing. We summed it up. Oh it's been summed It's fine. No. Look, in, in in general, in general, at the end, it it shows the Avengers that they finally have to learn to work together. They they've right. gone through the entire first portion of the story of the MCU. No, wait a minute. What? While you're saying that. It wasn't their fault that they weren't working together. It was Loki who was making them go at each other, right? That was the whole point of the no, staff. No, 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 no. But 
Right, but he didn't end up using the staff until way later. So he no, got hot guy was sitting there, and it was making them the all go freak out. No, but the, even at the very beginning, well, I mean, it's also just around, a room full of egos. It's also right, just a yeah. room full of egos. Yeah. They're all sort he of may have perpetuated in an way. already bad situation, but mm -hmm. right, you know. So no, that was not the that was not the main force for why they like. They I think the only two people who genuinely liked each other at first was basically Tony and Bruce Banner. Like I think those are the only two who actually really liked each other because they were like. Oh, fellow scientist. Uh, Black Widow and uh, Captain America liked each other. Oh, yeah. I was actually sad that one never materialized they never really, in anything. Honestly. They didn't. Well, you know, it's oh. funny that Jacob mentioned that cartoon earlier of their kids, oh. and Black Widow and uh, Captain America did have a kid in that. Oh, okay. So, well, I was referring to Hulk and Black Widow. Captain but... Widow. Captain <laughs> Widow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Black, Black Captain. Oh, no, no, no. That's actually in <laughs> Falcon and Winter Soldier. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? We actually yeah, well, I haven't watched that one yet. Me too. Well, um, there's two, actually. <laughs> but it, 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 you're right. It just, it does a perfect job of setting the story up for what could be. And it sets us up for Endgame and Infinity War, basically saying, Jacob, still there? Anyway. Yeah. Oh, a weird there. thing for me to say. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, basically, it... So it's Nick. Uh, basically, it just oh, it's Nick. it basically just sets up what could be eight years from now or seven years from now, whenever the final Infinity War Endgame movie comes out. It's like here's just a small taste of where we're gonna get by the end of Phase Three. Do you get think ready. they had that planned way back then? I feel like no. at that point, after about five years, no, I would completely disagree. I think after <clears throat> after about the after at the beginning, sure. During Iron Man, did they have it planned? No. Uh, during uh, what was after that? I'm sorry. Um, during Hulk, did they have it planned? Probably not. They were probably just playing with it. But four years after Hulk came out, absolutely they had some idea of where they were going to go with this. An idea, because they were already but, hinting at it. But like a full-on like sort of template, they, they, not so much. Especially with how they often they kept They may not have known they were going to add Captain yeah. Marvel or, they, or like Black Panther or uh, Doctor Strange or something. They may not have known all that, but they knew that they were going to get somewhere at some point with 30 to 50 fucking heroes against Thanos. Oh, for sure. By the fifth year. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. <laughs> Tom is Why laughing about Tom is laughing about a Hugo Weaving film for some reason. Uh, the best Hugo Apparently Weaving. the best Hugo Weaving film. So I don't know. I mean, you know what? There's no way outside of researching it. You, you might be right, Jacob. It may very well be that that never so happened topical. and they never even they didn't think about it. But I, I have a hard time believing that five years in they didn't have some type of plan to round it out after about 13 or 14 years. Oh, I think so, they they had they I think they had like Infinity Gauntlet, like the comic as sort of like what they wanted as their end goal. But like, well, what do you say? What do you say? What are you saying then that they didn't have that plan? No, I think they had, like, the general idea, but I think if they had it, like, you know, just perfectly worked out, like, this is, like, they wanted in-game to be oh, their yeah, final okay, template. Exactly. I think they, yeah, they had sure. the idea, for sure. I agree with you there, but, like, the they right. had it They knew they down. were going to do Infinity War, basically. Yeah, right? they knew they but were going to do that, but just not how, exactly. Yeah. Um, and who, they, they may not even have known how commercially successful it would have continued to get. Yeah. You know, maybe they were, maybe they were setting it up to, because, I mean, at the very end, Outside of seeing Thanos at the end of Avengers, could they have ended it there and been okay? Also, this maybe yeah. have been all right. Maybe maybe they just, they were like, oh, we don't want to we don't want to keep wringing the rag and uh, seeing what comes out, you know, because we yeah. may fail at some point. You know, we may get uh, to a seventh or eighth film and we may end up losing a lot more than we made in the first and, six. And so also, it's always a risk. This movie was Bunch like Mario Brothers. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Uh, also, this movie was completely unprecedented, right? Like we, anytime any comic book movie we had before this that had like more than like two or three characters was always right. like either mediocre to not good at best like mm -hmm. like like spider-man 3 is like one of the biggest complaints of that movie is like there's too many characters this movie has like too many characters but the movie works on so many levels like it's able to balance all those characters fairly well and i mean i think it's also due to joss whedon's ability to you know like like write to sort of uh uh on, 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 oh my god what's the what's the word ensemble casts like he did with buffy angel firefly all those and of course we now know he was a piece of shit but at the time it was just like there couldn't have been like a better person uh to actually write the avengers movie and so it kind of set up the mm -hmm. template for what would become even better avengers movies down the lines except for age of ultron of course but even the later avengers movies are 
uh, are way better than this one. But just the fact that this movie worked in general is kind of a miracle. And the way it was able to balance every single character story, it's very self-contained. Like you get everything you need to know about each character, like right. like within the movie without having to really even see, like I don't really need to see uh, Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2. I don't really need to see all of Phase 1 to get who these characters are. It's like, yeah, those, those, those movies are great yeah. on their own. I can okay. watch. But I think Avengers 1 even stands on its own. Um, and the action is like insanely well done. Like I, I remember Surprising. being in a theater for when it, <laughs> when the entire New York sequence happens and like the mm-hmm. Chitauri aliens pop out of the wormhole. Like I had no idea that was even going to happen. I was like, that was just going to really be kind of small scale. Like Loki's going to, I don't know, have like 12 to 20 baddies, not an entire goddamn alien army invade New York. Like that blew my mind. And you have like the giant Chitauri, uh, I guess shark fish ships that just pop yeah, out of there and then oh, right. Yeah, and like the like the just having Hulk be as powerful as he could be. Like this was like to me this was the full manifestation of how powerful the Hulk could be. Like when he full on does the whole like that's the thing cap. I'm always angry and just punches that one Chitari ship and is able to take it down in one go. It was like the coolest shit. And then like also the synergy between each of the characters, them using their abilities like you would if you were playing a video game with your friends, right? right. Like Hulk punches, punches a Chitari ship. Uh, Iron Man bla- like throws missiles at it to keep it from like hitting his friends. And then like Hawkeye uses a grappling hook to fly around. And then like he's also pointing out all the other ships to give directions to the other Avengers, like Cap's giving out orders to help the civilians. It's like this was like this was the coolest shit to see as a comic book fan because you never thought it could actually work. Mm-hmm. I will I will say that when Cap was telling the like the new the New York policeman, he was like, "Hey, get these people over here!" And they're like, "Who are you? We're not going to listen to you." He, he's like, "Should have just been like, I'm Captain America, America. I'm fucking Captain America." No, he would not, not <laughs> leave the. He just cursed a bunch, you yeah. know, and threatened yeah. their lives. But yeah, he's from New York, great. yeah. But no, I, I, yeah, like because uh, it was really cool watching that movie, seeing how many different characters that had had their own movies be together in this movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like I, I I remember watching that and thinking that's, it's really neat to see that. Yeah. Um, Yeah. uh, So yeah, I mean, like as I don't think I'd ever, we'd ever seen that really before. Yeah. And their banter back and forth was so good. Like, and just like the little individual moments as like a, as a comic book fan and like what, like when Hulk or not, not Hulk, but when Thor and cap are fighting side by side and they're kind of beat to shit. And like, that's when cap at that point, his costumes kind of battered and stuff. And he's just like, and Thor's like, you ready for another bout? And I forget, I can't remember if Cap actually says I can do this all day or he's just like, yeah, sure, why not? And then you see Thor kind of like (laughs) smile. It's like that sort of camaraderie that like you've always wanted to see on screen with these sort of characters. And like, yeah, the cool, the cool, spectacular stuff like Thor flying to the top of either the I think it was the Chrysler building and using it as a as a lightning rod was like so badass. And then like the like Iron Man when he's um, flying the nuke into the black hole. It was just like, man, this is this is this is insane that this movie exists at that time. Like I I had no idea, especially now it's super common and just yeah. And now it's like, we're just so used to it now because yeah, we're so used to that kind of stuff. It's like when you when you see a movie that has like, oh, they're shooting a blue laser in the sky, you're like, oh, God, I'm so tired of that. But when Avengers did it kind of (laughs) first or second i can't remember if there was a movie that kind of i guess maybe the first ghostbusters kind of did that um but to have the avengers do it did it towards it was yeah and it did it really well (laughs) while now it's just like it's a tired trope like oh they shot a blue light in the sky i guess it's the end of the world who cares summoning something or the world yeah the world's gonna blow up yeah yeah i i think it was a a really good close to uh to the first phase and Really good close to our, our first phase here. Our first phase as well. Uh, guys, unfortunately, we are all out of time for tonight. So, uh, Tom and Jacob, thank you guys so much for joining us. Well, Jacob, oh, yeah. thank always. you so much. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> always a good time. Uh, we'll certainly uh, try to get you guys back on for phase two whenever that may be. Uh, we'll see how successful this episode is. And then we'll go from there. <laughs> just spoken um, just like Marvel. Really, <laughs> really uh, so before we go, uh, we do want to go ahead and get uh, your recommendations for the week for our viewers to to take a watch. Um, if you want to do a Marvel movie, that's that's fine. Um, 
Um, I, I would request if you could do a superhero movie that is not in the Marvel Cinematic Universe just for fun. Oh. Just to kind of stretch our, uh, you know, stretch our uh, memory a little bit. Because stretch our memory? I, I've been trying to think, yeah, like trying to think outside of the last 13 years. Yes, yeah, think of it. Stretch your memory over worry, time. Tom. Tom, just because you've never heard a saying before does not mean that it's never been said by well, somebody somewhere. Enough. You know what? That's very fair. You've stretched my believability. <laughs> You stretch my belief hole. So, <laughs> my stiff hole. So, search your memory. I don't get it. What do you think? The heart of gold. Fill with the heart of gold. So, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and first, and I'm gonna recommend for this week. Uh, if you guys, if you haven't seen Blade, the uh, any of the three, I honestly really liked all of them, even though two and three were kind of fucking cheesy and kind of dumb. Um, I'll say the Come first on, one. Two is great. Three is three is the bad one. I, I like both. I liked all three of them. I really did. Um, Wesley Snipes is just such a badass. But that was a Marvel hero. Am I correct? Or well, yeah, DC? he's made Marvel. He was Marvel. Okay. There's he's also Marvel. Ryan Reynolds in one of those. He was, was in the third one. one. Yeah, yeah. And he's um, now Deadpool. Yes, now he's Deadpool. Marvel. Yeah. Uh, play two different Deadpools, technically. Um, if you and think this, about yeah, it. Yeah, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Yeah, he yeah. even makes reference to that in yeah, Deadpool he does. 2, I think. Um, but the first... Uh, Really and truly, I mean, if you look at it, Blade was, he was the first superhero of the new millennium, technically. It was before Spider-Man, was wasn't it? it? The first yeah. Blade? Uh, X, yeah, it was X like 97. Like X-Men was 99, though. Uh, Blade was 97. What year was Blade? 97. Jake? Oh, 97. Oh, I'm sorry. Blade was 97. Okay. All right. So Spider-Man was the first superhero. Then I guess Spider-Man would have been, yeah. Spider-Man would have been the first one. Um, but check out, yo, check out Blade. It's, if you like... If you're a big fan of like vampire films, I, I've mentioned this before. If you're a big fan of Underworld, like the Underworld franchise, where it's 98, 98, Ly Blade was 98. Sorry, okay. Ly Lycans against fine, Lycans against vampires. Um, then then check out uh, Blade is essentially Wesley Snipes is a half vampire, half human. No Lycans in Blade. Yeah, no oh, Lycans in so. Blade. Um, but he basically just fights all of these villains with a katana and just slices them in half, left and right, and he has to control his urges as this, you know, this excuse me, uh, this, this primeval character that's a vampire, half vampire, and uh, try to stay true to his human roots and balance the line between good and evil. So I always really liked it as a kid. I'd still watch it if it came on TV. So uh, Blade is my recommendation. Um, Tom, what about you? What's your recommendation for this week? Did you mean Jacob? What about Did Jacob? I mean Jacob? I think you meant Jacob. Okay, fine. You didn't pick one yet, I can tell. Uh, Jacob, what would your recommendation be for our listeners this week? Uh, I guess... Does mm, superheroes can they do they have to have superpowers? <laughs> like, no, not at all. Okay, because no, 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 no. I would I would either recommend 2012's Dread, which is the sort of Judge Dread uh, sure. film that came out with Carl uh, Urban, I think. Yeah, Carl Urban, uh -huh. and it totally totally great uh, underrated superhero, I guess, comic book movie. Uh, just really brutal, violent superhero comic book movie um, really does the character justice way more than the Sylvester Stallone film. Um, right. But probably one of the one I hold really near and dear to my heart is uh, 1998's Mask of Zorro with Antonio Banderas and Anthony Hopkins, which is kind of very much in the same vein as like Batman Beyond, where like right. Zorro has kind of retired. And he takes up this up and coming young uh young superhero and basically gives him the mantle of Zorro. It's really well done. It's directed by, uh, uh, crap, uh, golden eye. Um, James Bond. Yeah. I forget the Pierce Brosnan. Uh, oh. Martin Campbell directed by Martin Campbell. He also did golden eye okay. and, uh, casino Royale, two of my favorite bond films. And it's just, it's mm -hmm. super well done. It's, and, uh, it kind of reminds you like why Batman was so inspired by Zorro. Uh, and it's kind of a shame we haven't gotten like a sort of reboot or a new Zorro movie, but like Antonio Banderas and Anthony Hopkins and Catherine Zeta Jones rule in that film. Uh, absolutely. Okay. All right. So check out the, uh, check out a Zorro film, one Zorro film. We don't in particular, uh, 1978, the gay blade. <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> Mask of Zorro. Gary, what's your, what's your recommendation? Uh, I'm kidding. Yes, Mask of Zorro. Gary, what's your recommendation for the week? Uh, mine is the 2010 film Super. Uh, it stars yeah. Rain Wilson and Ellen, <laughs> uh, Ellen Page. Oh, uh, it's uh, it's That's kind a of a movie. black comedy superhero film. Like it's a guy. It's a great that's, fucking movie, man. It's, <laughs> I'm glad it's, you brought that up. It's a guy that just like takes like a a wrench and goes and beats people up. <laughs> 
uh, that are just, and for stupid things like because they cut in line. Yeah, yeah is, it, right. is it stupid? Did is that no stupid? one teach you manners? <laughs> um, you don't cut in line. Uh, it's certainly rated R, but uh, it's a uh, it's a nice uh, a nice time, you know, if you want to just kind of see what it's a more adult version of Kick Ass kind of thing. Yeah, like it's yeah. Yeah, but less less superpowers because it's just it's really just a regular guy. Like he's got no superpowers or super skills or anything. He's just a guy that goes crazy. Yeah, we should have defined what a superhero is and what we thought that was. And who our Tom, what's are. your favorite? It's movie? okay. Tom, what's your recommendation for this week? Do we want to go back? No, nope. do this again. No, nope. nope. um, <laughs> got in. <laughs> I think my recommendation would probably be Watchmen. I feel like that's a great one. It's a it's a, really good it's a great. Uh, this may be controversial to state but i think it's a very good adaptation of the watchman comic books yeah. and i especially like the lack of the squid the yes mm -hmm. i think the ending is much better in the, yeah. in the watchman in the way it resolves itself um i think it's very faithful removes a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be in there like, one of the few Zack snyder films that actually hit its mark i thought uh, 300. 300 did no i said one of the few 300's up there dawn of the dead is up there as well those okay, so most of his movies. movies. One no, he, of, one he's of the got, you, he's directed more than just those and the DC films, <laughs> just so you know. That was a long fucking cut of I, Justice I, I That was. I was thinking, I only came in in the second half, because yeah. you guys had already been going for like two and a half hours when I it got in there. It was better, but it's still not good. No. Yeah. So... <laughs> So that I'm Watchmen. Everybody okay. knows Watchmen. I, Perfect. I, I say that. Uh, so uh, go ahead and make sure you guys check out Jacob and Reese versus Evil on uh, Jacob. Once again, what uh, apps are you guys on currently? Spotify, iTunes. Um, I think we have the link on right. Podbean as well. Everywhere. Perfect. Cool, man. Uh, and then, Tom, thanks for joining us again. Unfortunately, it's your well. last episode. Well, so My farewell tour, you might say. <laughs> well, you got three more of these things. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, I'm know, looking forward to it. That's one of your last episodes. <laughs> uh, for Johnny. And Gary. And Thomas. Neil. And not Thomas. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to Lead Feather Productions' podcast of I Don't Give a Flick. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss an episode. Podcasts are available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and everywhere podcasts are hosted. I Don't Give a Flick is hosted and produced by Johnny Blackburn, Gary Elmore, and Neil Riley. Executive producer, Johnny Blackburn. Technical director, editor, and audio mixer, Gary Elmore. I Don't Give a Flick is a Lead Feather production. Copyright Lead Feather Productions 2021.